So, welcome everyone. Today is tier 15 or on install. So, we're going to be pushing the final levels. We're currently at 12. Uh, 12 was a 1% fall, so we get this done. We'll do one more 9 to get our glyph to level 10. Because with level 10, we get a increase of 10% for the rare nodes. And we get up to 98% multiplicative damage plus. That's what I'm really interested in. Let's push that niner. We're currently playing the god dot necro. And we'll see. I'm stuck at tier 12. Yeah, Lion. I think tier 12 is a bit of perseverance. You either need the perfect um, shrine. I, I saw this morning one of my necro friends clearing tier 12. And he plays a similar -ish build, slightly different, but essentially how his clear went was a blast wave shrine, and then he just he just did it. You know? It, it was it was literally yeah, like blast wave shrine. Done. I mean it, it's that simple. You you get the good shrines, then then you just get it done easily. If you don't get the good shrines, you, you will struggle and have to hope for a good good combination of seekers. Because we all know that a certain seeker combination can just ruin it for you. When even, especially if you have multiple mages going on or multiple fire explosions. And now with uh with the change, with a hot fix, right? Oh, this is a lag. I've noticed this lag way too often recently in the abattoir. It's it's like really weird. Um, but yeah, so with the with the hot fix. Everything is possible. Where can I get your builds from? They're all on YouTube. Uh, there is every video is linked and there's also a tier list where all the videos are in I actually have to get the abattoir of zero builds in there as well I haven't actually added them to the tier list yet so that's it's a bit of my I'm sorry for that ladies and gentlemen but we'll we'll, we'll get that too I mean tier nine is just it's just from a from a dungeon push itself tier nine is a joke. <laughs> It's kind of like, it's crazy how tier 9 is a joke, and then we're actually going into tier 10. It's like, oh, God, this Christ, whoever thought about this? Like, the difficulty ramp is, in, is insane. You've Mendel, we had first try. This, this is what I like to hear, my friend. I'll say howdy to the YouTube chat. Howdy to the YouTube chat. Didn't even have the live chat. YouTube is a bit weird. Sometimes, like, they, they have something called a top chat and a live chat, and sometimes you're stuck in the one and not in the other, and then you, you don't get the chat. Oh, okay, am I just finding, like, your shrine after shrine? Holy. What building equipment are we running? We're currently running the God Dot Necro. Uh, with a slight variation of actually using Litless Wall, because I'm, I'm running some experiments currently. Like I, I cleared I cleared tier twelve now down to one percent with both builds and then I just made a misstep. Died unfortunately. Vampiric, you know. <laughs> so I haven't actually tried tier twelve now since the hot fix because I haven't played since the hot fix. Hell from below? No, we're not playing Hell from Below. Mainly because I don't have the slots and I don't want the seekers feared. So the problem is if you actually fear the seekers, then well they run away and you don't want that. So that's the main reason why I'm not running health from below. It's it's not a bad item, but it just boils down to what, like if you fear the guys that are meant to all stand together, like you're you're kind of not doing yourself a favor, right? Okay, we're lucky that we don't have triple fire enchanted again. Make sure to always stand close to the fire enchanted guy. Because if if you have damage reduction from close and you decide to not stand close to the fire enchanted guy, do you, do you know how much he's chunking? Yeah. The moment where you're taking un, unprecedented evil amounts of damage. Because you're literally not standing close to who you're meant to be standing close to. Okay, is it enough? No, no, we're missing, we're missing 150 XP. No! I'm gonna do a normal dungeon for that. What about Ixfelds? Ixfelds is good if you play a build that is meant to do critical strikes. So you have to understand that Ixfelds is a is a thingy that crit strikes. But if you're essentially okay, which one doesn't have a boss? Which one can I just like go through as fast as possible? I just want one like to just essentially walk through, um, to get the last 100 XP. 
This is the God Dot Necro. So, uh, Ixfels is only good if you're doing critical strikes. If you're not critical striking, then Ixfels is not what you're looking for. I can take Zir and Varshan, but the Beast of Ice annihilates you. Beast of Ice is quite uh, something if you're not ready leveled yet for that. I mean, Beast of Ice is usually if you're able to clear a tier 31 Nightmare Dungeon, you should be able to also clear the Beast of Ice. But that's a theoretical moth because uh, like he's still more complicated than that. So you're able to wipe shitty moths, but, but the, the Seekers get you. Yep, that's the consensus. I mean, for the Seekers, you really need to understand how your damage reduction works. And I see a lot of people doing the mistake that they're playing an Infinimus build and they have damage reduction from distance, right? And then they're then they're standing close or they have damage reduction from close and they're actually standing distant. And then they're wondering why, like, uh, they get one shot by the mage. Now, obviously, there's not always the luxury to do this, but that's why you kind of want to have, like, rather damage reduction while fortified or damage reduction while... Uh, like, like just overall damage reduction because they're easy to go for. And then, then obviously the abattoir is overtuned to a degree. <laughs> so, so like if, if you're as a necro not able to avoid certain sources of damage, that's because you're a necro. It's just, just stop hitting me. Just the way it goes. If you, if you hit me one more time, we'll, 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 we'll get a tussle. Hmm. We're currently doing a normal dungeon, not an abattoir dungeon, because we're missing 100 XP. 100 freaking XP to level the glyph up. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not looking for that in the abattoir right now, correct? I'm just running through and I'm getting in. Andre, good to see you there, brother. Let's quickly snail all en slay all enemies, get get the freaking boss, get our 100 XP, and then we get the then we can do our first tier 12 try. Since since the update, I, I don't know, like, if the if the 20% less damage is so noticeable, I mean, the damage was anyways not there for mobs, but do they feel better now? Is it equally awful or not? How's it going? I haven't really watched many streams, so can't also confirm or unconfirm that, know that, how people are feeling. As of now. I'm hoping to just walk through without a single challenge, obviously. <laughs> I'm not looking for a challenge. I just want to get that tier 15. I don't have to uninstall the game. What's your tier? We're 12 right now. And we're very close to getting the glyph on level 10. Because I, I did some... I did try some aids to see... Like, I actually, that is really funny. I did some aids to for a YouTube video to, to make, a like, an explanation on how the patch feels on the lower end tiers. And it was so easy. It was crazy. It was, it was like, stupid. I, I get it done so simple. Okay, now that is level 10, ladies and gentlemen. Ta-da. Which gives us, essentially, what we're looking for. Now we are officially at... 98% damage, more resistance to all elements, damage to elites, and a little bit more int. So 10 is fantastic. Also probably the max I'll get it, huh? Because we all know how complicated it is to get it even higher than 10. Okay, no, disenchant, disenchant. No, wait, there could be actually the things I'm looking for. So looking for a very weird stemmer reduction, huh? Looking for a very weird aspect called the aspect exploiter's aspect. Can't find it for the love of God. Okay, we got a twelve with me. Got a twelve with me. I uh, got a max health potion. Usually check the max health potion. Do the zeros or zeros point to make any difference? Well, I mean, we're going from ninety six percent to ninety eight percent multiplicative damage. It's two percent more. I'm doing twenty million damage over time. Shebang. Is it worth it? It's the only scale I have left. I, I have no other damage scale left. I, like, I mean, I my, my aspects are all max rolled, right? My my equipment is max rolled defense-wise, more or less. 
so so there's like this is this is what's what's left over this is the the scale you you essentially have to to boost everything So is is it worth it? What, what else? You don't you, you, at this at this point when you really reach the abattoir of Zir in this level, this is what you do. This is what you can get up. So yeah, which is also the like the sad part because th that's where the glyph XP was then really annoying. Because you had only this as your damage scale, but it was like so complicated to get it in any meaningful way upwards. While this was like just the only damage scale you had. Now let's not get killed by that poison explosion. Because we all know it would kill me. No matter how defensive you are. You know the current record for AOZ level? I think the Chinese have cleared tier 25 already, if I'm not mistaken. Um... I don't know if with bugs or without bugs. Uh, I know Rob did tier 20 on a barb. Um, the highest Sork I have, uh, the highest Necker I've seen is tier 14. I think again, like the, the maximum that you'll see on Necro is if even tier 20 and already for tier 20, you will have to farm your heart out. So, so in order to in any, like in any way to see tier 20 as a Necro, You'll be, you'll be having to just literally sacrifice your children, your family, like the amount of farm you have to put in uh, to, to get there. So 15 is more realistic without having to push the glyph further. And then obviously your own depravity can push you as as far as you want. I mean, if, you, if you're willing to put in the work, right? If you're, if you're willing to put in the levels, I mean, if you're, if you're willing to, to really go, go that distance, be my guest. But in reality, I don't see Necro going much further than 15 without without really um, pushing pushing things hard. You know, so that that would truly just require you to to level up that glyph to to a high level. And and who does that? When I mean, the highest glyph I've seen is 50 so far. And that's already with shared grind. So when you essentially have people that open up the abattoir for you and you just jump in to kill the seekers with them and get the XP. So really, really only like the, you know, the content creator plus plus bonus. Uh, that's the only way how I've seen the glyph already at 50. Right. Good to Morgan Carlson. Good to see you there. Oh, also, I did lose YouTube for a second. When again, the real difference the the rune makes is like when it gets level 50. I, I saw that when you get the tears of blood to level 50, then you get the radius increase. And the damage literally went from 100, 100 like went up to 270% multiplicative. Right now, we are at 90% multiplicative. So if you really wanted to beat these tier, if I really wanted to beat this easily right now, I would just farm my glyph up to 50. Because again, on 50, like it's 260, 270% multiplicative instead of 90. Like that, that's a, that's a, that's, you know? And if I'm imagine like tripling my damage at this point, yeah, sure. I could do this even easier, right? I could kill the bosses even easier. But, but only, like, get it only up to level 50 to, to do that. Schwierig. The shrine. Oh, that's a blast wave shrine. The sad part, technically, in order to beat this tier now, I will keep this Blast Wave Shrine on the map. Then, as soon as the Seekers spawn, I run all the way back to that Blast Wave Shrine to pick it up. And then I beat the Seekers, right? And anything else than doing that is being stupid and stubborn. Right? Right? 
I am known for stupid and stubborn, by the way. Also, a Blast Wave Shrine does not guarantee you're kind of beating it. It just, you know, gives you a better, better chance. How do you get the Tears of Blood Glyph? You have to beat Tier 1 of the Abattoir of Zir. And in order to go into Tier 1 of the Abattoir of Zir, I think you can have someone open it up for you, or you have to finish your seasonal journey. I don't actually know what happens. Can, can someone just open it up for you? If that, if that actually works. I've never looked into it. So if someone can open it up for you, well, that's kind of cool. To be honest. Because not, not everyone has the seasonal journey done and not everyone can be asked to get the seasonal journey done. So I'm kind of like, it's nice. I mean, then again, if you don't have the seasonal journey done, you're technically not ready for the Abattoir of Zir. Right? And if you fail the tier one Abattoir of Zir, you're anyways not ready. Okay, we're doing like very few damage right now. I'm not happy about my overall damage output. It's fine though. We're slacking a bit. Almost walked into that poison thingy. Oh, that's my wife. That's complicated. Yeah, bitte. Ah, uh, this can I in four minutes? Is that möglich? Okay. Two, two. My daughters were doing cute things, probably. So this, this is the call. My daughters are doing cute things, kind of. Thought you were Scandinavian. Now I'm German. I do things the German way. Like talking German, you know? Okay, this is this was the slowest clear I've done in a while. Usually we clear this around like eight minutes. Uh, eight minutes. Uh, six and a half to seven minutes. It's usually what I get this done with. But if they're not coming with me, is this even worth it to run back to the Blast Wave Shrine? Can I, can I grind? Can I, can I, did they come with me? Only if I ask them nicely, Ryan. They're, they're, yeah, they're not going to come with me. <laughs> okay, uh, wait, let me see what they're doing. Okay, sorry. They were doing a Christmas tree picnic. Is Blood Search build viable in AOZ 2 or this build only that can hope to be tier 10? Blood Search can beat uh, tier 9, 100%. Uh, but after tier 9, it might, might cap out. Ah, you should have left some mobs at the previous shrine. But do the mobs not despawn? I've actually never, I've never left like shrines alive to go back. Like I just don't do that, you know, as you can see. I thought always the mobs just despawn behind you at some point. Honestly, I've, I've, ne I've never, I've never bothered with the, with the backtracking, you know, just not my play style. If, if the shrine is not, the shrine is not where the dudes are, then then I, I can't be ass. Yeah. Conduit Shrines? I don't even take Conduit Shrines anymore because Conduit Shrines are so bad. I mean, after after tier 10, they just get sadness, right? They, they, do, they do a few million damage per clap, but I just do more damage without them. Set Peppa Conduit Shrine. By the way, this enemy type here is fantastic. They die so easy.
<laughs> He's definitely a more welcome clear already. Oh, for this build, I prefer the cooldown shrine. I mean, Blast Wave over everything, right? Blast Because Blast Wave has, like, infinite scaling, as far as I understand that. Where Conduit has, like, this, this finite scaling thingy. But Blast Wave just gets, like, so so infinitely stronger until you do, like, I don't know, like, a couple of billion per, per hit with a Blast Wave. It's just so good. I can ask, I just got the ultimate version, but when I go play, it's showing demo. Uh, did you activate it? I mean, the de I, I think the demo is not active anymore, so... I would be surprised if you still get the demo. I mean, I, I don't know if the demo is still active, because, like, I, I thought it wasn't. But we're already past the demo times. Or the trial. Let's say, let's say correctly before people get angry again, the trial. Because you, you should have seen the amount of people that were angry when they figured out that the demo is, is a trial and doesn't allow them to play the game forever for free. And they were like, oh, no, I'm so mad. I want to play the game for like 40 hours for free and then don't buy it. But I'm so mad that I can't do that. It's like, sir, but if you want to play the game for 40 hours, why don't you buy it? Because then it's actually worth the money. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm sorry, if you want to spend so much time with the game, why don't you just buy it? Because then you're clearly interested. You have to change the play version. Ah, see, there you go, Leonard. Uh, that might that might be the thing. I mean, sometimes when you when you have like uh, Diablo open in Battle.net, there's also like you might you might just have the beta version. Um, and then you have to just ch check the drop down me menu on the play button and that usually fixes in. See how we are now vastly faster clearing due to enemy type. I mean, before we were just way slower than this and now we're we're just de definitely putting on a chunk. I mean, we got lucky on the shrines, that's true, but it's, it's more like due to the enemy type being just very easily killable with what we're doing here. Please all gather up, sirs and ma'ams. Like, oh god, that's too many calculations. Too many calculations. Yeah, we thought this bug was, by the way, fixed, guys. But now with uh, the Abattoir of Zir coming back, and now with the enemies having too much HP and everything, seems like that the too many calculations bug actually back to a degree. I mean, the managing section of Xbox, dude, I, I seriously do not know how to do it on the Xbox. I'm very sorry, sir. I, I, I own a PlayStation, and that's the extent of my console knowledge. And I've never played this game there, so... Oh, so you installed the demo instead of the game. Well, see, there we go. Like you, At least we have an answer. So, so at least you're not stupid, or, or just not that stupid, you know? <laughs> like, like, reasonable stupid. Okay, let's see. Without the distraction of the family now, let's get this. Let's get this one done. We should probably go go uh, like we have enough time to go shrine shopping, but I guess I'm so stubborn to to want to beat this without a shrine if I can. Oh no, he's gonna force me to activate this, and I didn't want to activate this. Before I kill this guy, I need to reset my cooldowns quickly. Mm-hmm. I'm not was not going to like. That is teleport. Is this teleporters? No, it's not teleporters, right? Honestly, most of the time I seriously don't even know what they are anymore at this point. I know there's a field of poison now below them, but there are three. Oh, you are. You're the sorg. I need to stick to the sorg. Like, I can ignore the other one, but I need to stick to the sorg because we can't be getting. Um, 
done with this, right? And then the Sork uh, kind of like survives. Just killing the Sork alone is kind of like pain. That's why I like to then incise the Sorcerer. There's a lot of poison going on right now and I don't like it. That was me just jumping into triple uh triple pillars of destruction. That almost had me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Really nice if you stop just teleporting away to Narnia. putting me in gigantic pools of poison those are two things i would really really enjoy avoiding nice they were like really really uh good to kill as 17,900 xp wow that's that's uh that's something for that huh pretty good okay so we don't have to completely uninstall yet guys we're already made it to 13 so that's good uh we're still not getting what we're looking for i mean this attack speed is actually good on the gloves because right now my gloves have intelligence shadow damage over time lucky hit chance blight Technically, attack speed is actually better to make me, uh, you know, a bit more reasonable. This is total armor, dex, nope, useless. Mm, oh, a 925 wand, yikes. Don't need that, but still nice to get. Okay, 30 now. Would you say the game is worth the 99 pounds? Uh, you can get it for cheaper. I mean, how, how much do you pay for Diablo at the very moment currently? I mean, you can get it for 69, right? What, how much, how much do you buy it for? Here, 69, standard edition. I, I wouldn't, I'd buy the standard. Like I wouldn't buy anything but standard, standard. Like the rest ain't worth it, the rest is shit. Standard. So, but yes, I do think the, the game is absolutely worth it. I just made a video on it. Uh, the game has gone far and beyond in actually the past six months. Like for, from where we started and where we are right now, it's quite impressive what the game has done. But at the same time, it's sad because like it was necessary to go this distance or the game would have been an absolute hellhole. So it's kind of nice, but at the same time, it's kind of like, oof, you know? <laughs> The thing is, like, the season three, season four, I, like, I think, like, really worth it for people that don't want any pain is going to be season four. Season four is going to be the first season where it's like <clears throat> most of the growing pains are going to be solved and, and we're going to be good. OK, I, I barely have any any crafting materials left, it seems, huh? So 13, let's see how 13 feels if I want to upgrade my glyph beforehand or not. Ladies and gentlemen. What's the use of attack speed for the build? Well, you can corpse explosion faster. At least they're rapidly changing things. At least they're rapidly changing things for free. <laughs> right? People people like to complain, but the reality is that they could have also let Diablo the way it is because they already made insane sales numbers. Just keep pumping out skins and just milk the existing players. That could have been a decision as well, but they actually choose to 
continuously improve on the game and just go further and actually improve it, which is nice to see and I appreciate it. But yeah, like the, the, the biggest problem right now is the itemization. And I think that the biggest frustration point is the itemization. Because as the as the normal player, you need to have a PhD in itemology to sometimes get what you're looking for, to also understand what you're looking for, and to see through all like the, the weird affixes and everything we're having. And that's just not the way how games should be. Um and that probably will only get fixed like after season four, probably. That's what they said. Um, which is kind of sad because like it's it's something they should really look into for season three already. Because if we have another another season with this itemization, it's gonna be like <sighs> sad tears. Goodbye. I mean, I'll, I'll do it, but I won't be happy. I'm right, for clearing speed. I'm currently happy. I think we're getting here good anima enemy groups again because again these these robbers are relatively easy to kill and yes it's worth it to by the way kill a three pack of elites I mean, we could we could pull these here with us now into the next pack of elites as well we could also just finish them before they like weirdly despawn sometimes happens he dies how much time did we have left at the end i i didn't pay attention to the clock guys i I think it was rather clutch probably on the damage department so did anyone look at the clock for the tier 12 one minute oh one minute is actually plenty in one minute i could have like buttered up their their booties a little bit more And I can squeeze out more damage out of this build, so bad. No, there's there's a way how to squeeze out more damage. I also have two glyphs that I'm using not maximum level, so there is there is more damage to get out. I could sacrifice some survivability. But I feel like we had some close calls in the last fight, right? When I had to jump after the mage. Which is anyways my most annoying scenario in every single time. Like having to jump after the mage, right? I don't know if you're feeling that too, Chad, but every single time it's like, I have I have them under control, the barb is hitting me, the rogue is like stabbing me in the back, everything is perfect, the druid is like druiding around. And cool. And then the mage teleports away and you're just like... Unamused. Everything is fine. Until... The mage just decides to make it not fine. Oh no, why did it pick up the conduit? I made a mistake. Mistakes were made. I'm so sorry, chat. Oh, this is horrible. I can't get out of the conduit right now. No, I don't want to be in here. This is bad. Go away, conduit shrine. I don't want you. You're slowing me down considerably. I'm just trying to do a lot of damage here. You're preventing that. So how's my cooldown so low? It is to Crapify Curse with a lot of lucky hit, but also Flicker Step. Flicker Step is whenever I dash through something, I get a 10 second reduction in cooldown on my on my Bone Storm, and 10 seconds is a lot. Right? The more enemies you da dash through, the more cooldown and the reduction you have, and I just went from 13 down to one in one dash, so it's working, it's fire. Uh, that's why I will never put away Flicker Step, to be honest. It's just too good. Nice to see Greater Rifts in D4, though. It's actually worse than Greater Rifts because the enemies don't follow you. So this is something I kind of dislike. I, I would like the enemies from the beginning to follow me because I am not... I'm, I'm undying, right? With my build, I'm undying. I can literally not die. So why, why can I not just pull the whole dungeon together and then fight it at one spot? I mean, as you can see, the reason for that is because the game breaks when you do that. <laughs> so the game is not able to handle all these calculations, as it seems, because I'm doing like one bajillion damage over time, which is then causing instabilities in the matrix and therefore like trying to, to break everything in existence. 
By the way, why attack speed here right now? There's so many corpses that exist that without attack speed, I couldn't even explode all these corpses. And that's why attack speed is a thing. We're at least able to, to remotely get all these corpses exploded at some point. Come on, Wolf. You die before you just refill your HP now. Haha. <laughs> well then. But that lethal shrine will come in handy. If I just pull it to the next group of elites here. Okay, we're, we're, yeah, we got a good clear speed. I mean, we're, 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 we're like seven minute clear speed in. That's that's nice. I expected us to be a bit slower, but I won't complain. This is just fairly on the on the decent side. I fear a bit, yeah, that this will happen with the 28 second cooldown. I mean, we got we got some corpses running. There's a sword. Unless poison pools plus fire, that's uh, and lightning. Hmm. That might be, yeah, that might be a combination and shadow. Yeah, the shadow summoners, they killed me. Okay, 12 done, 13 first try dead. Does turning damage numbers off have latency and frame drops? Turning damage numbers off just puts them away, but it doesn't make them go away in the system. So the way how things are lagging has nothing to do with with you or anything it's the game it's the server that cannot handle the amount of calculations simple as it is there was a bug in season one with bloodlands that would literally lag out the server and yeah that bug seems to be back with the abu 12 zero because there's just too many opponents that too long survive At the moment, I'm a bit upheld at the way they approach developing patches and new features. Yes, I'm with you. But I do believe it's a little bit of a homegrown problem as well, because we are obviously asking for more, always for more, right? And they got to be making more, and they always have shorter time frames to do this. Um, especially got to consider while... While they're obviously like making the bug fixes and these things, they're also still working on season three, but I think season three should actually be done at this point, right? So they're already working on season four and season five in the in the background. So so right? Like like it's I mean it's not like they're working only on season two right now. They're, and and making season two work. They're they're also like working on the future probably three seasons already, I would say. So so that's always like the way how you how you kinda look at it, right? Maybe they just need more people. What's your opinion? One versus Black River. Uh, while you're clearing Rebel, Black River is definitely better. For the bosses, you could go back to the wand. But then again, like we have the damage to do both. It's just merely down to the fact again of um, if, if the bosses get like some unfortunate combinations. Like right now, right now, the last combination was poison pools. Uh, lightning, uh, dibble dabbles plus fire, and then and then on top of that, there was the barbarian actually making shadow clones of himself that would that would like cast multiple effects again. And I think the shadow clones is actually what got us in the end. Pl plus, it was a trio of things that don't actually stand together, right? I mean, for me, optimal it is when it's kind of like two barbs and they're just standing on each other, no matter what they have. If it's two barbs and I can just live in their booty holds, that that's perfection for me. Um. But yeah, I mean that, that's what it that's what it cooks down to, right? I'm not ready. So skip skip three and directly jump to season six. I mean definitely. They said it already, like in order to upgrade the itemization, they need a bigger back end kind of upgrade. I don't know how to say that. They already said something about the itemization just needing a, a bigger patch, and that, that is further down the line. Why, why can we not just strike everything before that and just jump to the better itemization, you know? The main problem with the better itemization, though, is that, again, the better itemization is just a, a fix. It's actually not new content. You know what I mean? So if, if, we, if we reach that point where then the items are being actually fixed, where the items are finally working, they're supposed to be working... That is also just going to be a, that's nice, but it's not a, wow, that's great new content. It's like, no, we just, 
This is what we have been waiting for since season one. Thank you very much. Appreciando. Now, where's the actual content on top of that, right? Because bringing us back to the problem that we talked about, always needing, wanting more, where's, where's the content? However, Piri 2, that's another two years of a wane, and I think in that time, Diablo has a lot of things to do good. What I'm going to be finding interesting is, I mean, PoE 2 is kind of set in what it does, right? But with Diablo now thinking about new features and everything, it would be intriguing to see if PoE 2 is going to be integrating some of that stuff as well in their own systems, because they're, they're going to watch Diablo right life to doing their things live, trying to improve their game now, while they're just chili vanilla developing like PoE 2 and coming up with their own things. But no one shall say if, if Diablo comes up with something good, actually, uh, that PoE is going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what, these, that, like, we, we should just take that. Do you recommend your viewers to buy Diablo? Yes, I would still recommend it. I think it's a fantastic game, especially for people that don't have too much time to game. <laughs> Sounds always weird to say that, but the less time you have to game, the better Diablo will feel. Not that you can't sink a lot of hours in, but that with a minimal time investment, you can get maximum fun out of a game. You know, when you're playing World of Warcraft, in World of Warcraft with a maximal time investment, you're going to get maximal fun. But with a minimal time investment, you're always going to feel like you're hanging behind everyone else, right? That, that's, that's, that's MMOs for you in a nutshell. But in Diablo right now, you're in this unique spot where where if you have less time to invest, it doesn't feel bad. You know, it's just like you get less time to invest. You're not falling behind anyone because catching up itemization wise is good and easy. And actually, the people that spend more time don't even necessarily have better items than you because... <laughs> Let me tell you, it's really complicated sometimes to find good drops. And, and we're talking about, obviously, a betterment of 1% to 2%. So e even if you have, like, you know, like only 20, 20 hours per month to play, uh, the, the amount of endgame itemization and awesomeness you can still whip out is, is quite astounding. You only play some hours a week you can, yeah exactly you can get to level 100 this season you can actually see every single content so I'm, I'm saying i think this is great how much fun and boring content to get a shaco well why would you want a shaco it's completely useless i mean for necro for example you don't need a shaco also that's for you to decide how boring you find the grind to a shaco because again like you know obviously you're just grinding materials it's a means to an end you know this, this is like a self-inflicted grind that you're doing to yourself <laughs> but I, for example, have been enjoying Helltides a lot, so so that was fun content for me personally. For example, that's a lot of um, storms to get going on here. I was too lazy to wait with the shrine. Just took it. Oh, please pull everyone together. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if these lads are going to be enough to essentially summon the seekers, but I hope because else I won't have time to actually clear this. Right? Because right now the first time that we might might just not have the time to kill the seekers, even when we can summon them. I oh, never, never had that vampiric dude follow us. Just tell me, you three nerds are enough. You are, you are just barely. That is a sorcerer and a teleporter and a yeah. That's horrible. That is horrible. This is gonna be bad. I can already say that wholeheartedly because this is going to be me busily running after three people so that dude just teleported away you know 
So instead of now doing the all damage to all these three guys, I am stuck doing nothing to one guy. While we're essentially waiting for him to come back in and he's shooting me through the wall. Now he teleported away again, further away. I mean, damage reduction is great here right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm def definitely digging this from a, from a damage reduction standpoint. I mean, I'm standing in the fire. I'm standing in the, in the lightning. I'm standing like in, in all of this, you know, so, and, and I'm not dying. That one is working great in that regard. Damage is also on the good side. I mean, I, th I think we could get it down, but not the third one. It's actually our problem. Yeah, we, we, we can't die more or less. In a 13, but we we might need to... I mean, that, that teleporter is unlucky for us. For sure. And the best part with the little wall is that you're essentially like just continuously having um okay did you three just decide that it would be funny <laughs> like all three just decided it would be really funny if they stepped away from each other and no one would actually stand to the other one because you know if they if they all actually stand all three together that would be boring and yes i'm trying to pull them together <laughs> What do you think about AOZ being looked behind Season Journey? I didn't complete it, but it's completing Tears of AZ solo. I mean, so so simple as it is. It should be locked behind Season because it's meant to be endgame content. I mean, if you are a new player joining right now, you, you're not supposed to do the AOZ. I mean, it's something you earn through playtime, something you earn through getting there, right? Something you earn through through getting to that point. Um, so there, there, I'm like, I'm okay with where it is, to be honest. Mm, let me do 113 with this combination now. Um, I'm, I'm totally fine with, with where we are stuck in, in, um, in the lube. So this is now with one barrier, by the way. I mean, technically, you can obviously clear the first tier of AOZ with a non-level 100 character, depending on your power level. Fully possible. So definitely, definitely don't need to be level 100 to enjoy the AOZ, but supposedly, uh, I mean, that, that's what the content is meant for, right? For for the, the level 100 plus. When you, when you have all your gear together, when you have put in the hours to already get to this point. That's for whom it is supposed to be. Because if you're level 90, why would you bother with the AOZ? You just get other things to do. I mean, obviously farming tier one is better than farming nightmare dungeons. I don't I don't just know how much XP you're actually getting for killing these mobs. Or are you even getting XP for killing these mobs? See, I don't even know if we're getting XP for killing this. If we wouldn't be. You get XP, it could be great for leveling, that's for sure. I'm not ready yet. Level and finish goes way faster, we'll see that that's that's nice. Good side effect. But let's be fair, a first character wouldn't wouldn't probably do this. So if this is your first character, if this is your first time leveling something ever, you wouldn't go. Uh, so therefore, like, if, if it's your second character, you most likely know someone who can open the AOZ for you. So you can start, you can start leveling in there. I think, I think that that's something like, you know, it's, it's like one of these problems. That's not a problem. That's only, that's only a problem for, for a selected few. I know, right? Here's this. We're currently doing tier 13. We're, we're, um, we just beat tier 12 with our build. And now we're we're checking if we can find the perfect secret combination for 13. And when we got two times awful combinations now that weren't like so good for us. 
and the build we're playing. Um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Now. Levels your glyph. I put my level, uh, my glyph up to level 10. Uh, I did some aids for a YouTube video that, that pushed me really fast forward. I mean, like if you do three aids, you're getting so fast. When I could technically push it now to level 11, but again, the damage gain is so minimal. I mainly wanted to get it to 10 to have like the first percentual increase in the, in the rare glyphs. But even that is so minimal that it's not really worth it. I mean, 10, 10 is a good level to, to essentially push for 15. If I can't, if I can't reach 15 with 10, you know, then, then I know I can reach it with a higher glyph. Simple matter of fact. But if my survivability can't do it, then, then it's just a ma matter of uh, if my survivability can do it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Then it's just a matter of um, pushing up my glyph level, and that's where I just know I can do it, but I don't have to do it. That makes sense to you? Like if I, if I literally figure out, sure, I can survive tier 14. I can survive tier 15. I can stand in the Seekers, right? I can eat the damage. I can do that. Well, if that's the case, why, you know, then then I just have to level up the Glyph. But if I already know this, well, why would I level up the Glyph, you know? <laughs> if I spent the time, I've already figured out it is it is possible. And it's actually just a damage question. To grind honestly the glyph goes really fast as soon as you start like if you if you can push nines currently just just do nines for xp uh you're going really fast i, I wouldn't do tens for xp because we all like nine is obviously the sweet spot for xp but nine is also like nine thousand xp so you know like every four minutes you can do a nine you get nine thousand xp per that means you got to do so and so many per hour yeah. <laughs> it goes back to math right Do you farming? We're not farming tier. We're pushing right now. So I'm, I'm not farming anymore. I'm done farming. Uh, we're doing tier 13 now to, to get tier 13 done. Then we're going to do 14. And lastly, 15. And if we don't do this, we're going to uninstall the game and only reinstall it for Midwinter Blight in two days. You know how it is, chat? Got to delete everything. I'm not even sure if I'm looking forward to Midwinter Blight. I mean, we all know it's just a it's, it's just a literal Christmas event. But then again, it's it's skins, so you know what? I'm 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 not looking forward to it as a I'm so excited to play the content because we all know it's just for skins. But then again, I, I'm I'm not getting free skins, you know. I still don't have the Lord Zeer skin, uh, which is kind of like a bummer because I did so many Lord Zeers and then I still don't have the skin. <sighs> that makes me sad. I said it. I'm not taking it back. There's an artillery shrine that I could claim for the for the seeker fine. There's more. Get them all together. I'm gonna use an incense too. <laughs> I don't have any more materials to craft instances. My potion's gonna run out in a second. I don't have any more potions too. I don't have, have like a, a resource potion with me, I guess. Here, there you go. So why not, why not use instances? Do you still have instances at this point? You haven't used them all? You're not out of materials? Ow. What are you doing, Chad? Just farming mats the whole time? I've used up everything I had. I'm pissed broke. I mean, I even ran out of money. Oh, this is going to be bad because my... I'm literally going to be having to wane.
See this this here right now is for example in like like three better bosses that are actually standing together, right? It's a good thing for me. Because they, they wanna find. Shall not be underestimated when people actually want to find. Had to curse them again. Like you shall shall not underestimate how much damage reduction the curse is. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, let's go. It's, D4 is apparently a life service game. I'm surprised we don't get more events. Honestly, we, we've been really good for a life service game this season. You can complain about many things, but they updated this season frequently throughout the season, right? They gave us a lot of patches, hot fixes, bug fixes, blah, whatsoever. Oh, that's 21,000. Well, we're going up to 11 now. Yikes. So we've we've gotten a lot of this season, I think. You you like really really like at some point the complaints seeming to be silly, right? When even the Apple Twelve Zero was nice, and it's the first time, so we can it only can get better at this point, you know. Okay, that was a tier thirteen down, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're, get, we're getting there. I lost. I lost Chan. No. Lost Chan. Chad, come back. I'm going to click too many buttons. Things were made. Uh, I need to go here. Yeah, I can do back, Chan. Get that. Sorry. And life chat. Good. That was boop. Next one. Uh we still are not getting what we're looking for. Increased damage to stun enemies, not an option. By the way, we just did it without the littlest wall chan. Right? Jason, greetings. Any interest for a game called 1944 World War II shooter? Not sure if I if I wanna touch another World War II shooter, right? Okay, that is tier 14 now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's craft two just for the sake of it. Um, we even had, we even had to swap our glyph in between. Come on, next one, next one, ladies and gentlemen. I think if we could, if we could go up to tier 15, that would be nice to see. Wouldn't complain about that. And right now my, my push my push is exactly what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to exactly get this far today. So we have already reached halfway. We're at 14 now. If we beat 14, we've reached 15. I never press the size if I want to beat 15. No, I, I really want to beat 15, guys. I don't want to beat 16, but I want to beat 15. So that that's the last I want to do. But the fun part, if I if we actually get the 14 done, I think we have to do like a two nines or so to get our glyph stronger because we're we're close to level 12 then. I mean, I don't know how much XP this this tier will be giving us. We'll see about it. Uh, we'll play without the Littlest Wall again. This 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 try. Uh, could you please come all together a bit faster? It's like silly when these damage reduction nerds are just refusing to to walk in any way close, and you just you, they also refuse to get pulled in, and you're just stuck waiting for silliness. Oh wait! Do not forget to vampiric curse the dudes because if you're not dashing through them and if you're not vampiric cursing them, they are not taking 60% more damage. 
because the flowing vein sad enemies that are that are moving or vampiric curse right the problem is you so often don't have these guys moving right like due to the amount of stuns we do um you're like kind of to the point where the moving proportion doesn't apply anymore <laughs> because because they're like you know stunned stunned in time and place forever no more movement for you jimothy oh godness christ i really have to walk back and around and then here Ooh. I need more time. are the drop chances higher oh wow uh when is the drop chance by jury lower when i do it on 80 instead of 100 no the drop chance is equal like there there's no there's no like like level reason to not do something just just do it essentially right so wish you get the butcher and aoz well if there was any reward for it sure i would agree but there there's obviously nothing for it right there there's the butcher and aoz but then you would he would just be there for being there you know he wouldn't be there for for anything It's your build, please. Build is already uploaded on the channel. It's called the Giga.Necro, my friend. There's also a link in the description below that takes you straight to the Mobilitics profile. Uh, it's not the Giga. Dot, it's the God. Dot. Sorry, I lied to you. It is a full corpse explosion build that only focuses on damage over time. There's no more crit or anything involved. I mean, cr we're, we're critting on the side uh, just because we exist. But it is not our main plan to actually crit. So we're we're just um, doing dot damage and as much of that as is humanly possible or inhumanly possible. Uh huh. Because we're you know we're necro. Uh, so yeah, that's that's currently the the plan behind the build, and it does work plenty well as you can see. How we're just melting things, especially if things is standing together, because that that is what you want, right? You want you want things to be stacked up. You want to pull as many things together as you can, and then just teach them a lesson about humility and life. They just drop so fast. And since you don't rely on crits or luck, well, lucky hit is only for corpse production, but yeah, since you don't rely on crits, you're essentially just having like a constant great stream of damage going on. That being said, it's very unfleshy and boring to play because you're essentially just sitting there. You're making sure that your armor is permanently up, that you're, that you're never, you're never at the point of, of not being armored. And uh, then you have your permanent barrier going on, and then you just damage over time your opponents, and that's about it. Like you know, just from a just from a whole gameplay loop standpoint, it is probably the most boring necro to play. I mean, that's that's any infinimus necro to be honest. It's just it's just not exciting. It's not not world shattering, earth moving. It's not like some cool jumps in and do a cool core skill attack. It's more like you know, I, I exist, you die. I exist, you die, and that's in. Which can be sometimes boring. Now this is here, the, this is the perfect source of opponents to like now, now just nuke into oblivion. Explode more corpses! Kill them all. Tried the new Warzone yet? Nope. I'm also not planning to. But thank you for showing your interest. I just do have no personal investment in Warzone anymore right now. I mean, what, what we're planning to do over the next days is we're definitely planning to enjoy the Midwinter Blind. So that that's something like it's going to be new. So uh, we're going to do some stuff on that. But to be honest, like today is, is my final day of AOZ pushing. And then after we've been pushing AOZ, we'll be we're planning currently some Elden Ring. Like I want to do an Elden Ring Platinum speed run. Because why not? Um, because I want to like, you know, it's about showing how much fun it can be to actually go for a Platinum trophy and not how much pain it can be. So we're just going to have the most fun, fun way to actually achieve that. Uh, that's what's going to keep us busy for two days. Then we're going to have 
Maybe maybe another Lights of Peace speed run marathon just to see how quick I can beat the game, just for the YOLOs. Um, I mean, in between Midwinter Blight and obviously covering every single scrap of information we get about Season 3. And then we don't, we don't know what the next, uh, what the new year brings, right? Yeah, right, right now, I mean, the, the season is kind of done, right? If you haven't, like, the, 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 the last bits of content I can squeeze out is essentially starting a rogue. But rogue was, like, was, like, just okay fun to me. But we're essentially, we've, we've essentially covered everything this season, you know? And right now, I could just make some more clickbait videos about, Oh, the state of Diablo is so bad! Uh, everyone hates Diablo, but like, uh, this is Asmongold speaking. Uh, like, let's make another video on a game that we don't actually play, that we just cover for clicks. Some reaction content to some weirdos saying things. You know how it is. The plan to share your accomplishment with the Maxwell leaderboard. I mean, I'm, I'm not the most accomplished Necro, so I mean, I, I could get up there if I wanted to. Uh, maybe, maybe if I beat tier 15, because that was my personal happiness goal. Um, I, I, would, I would put myself on there. Yeah. Did you make use of poison resist elixirs on Duriel? Sure, you could. But, but like, but that's only if you're lower level needed. I don't think you'll need it later on ever. But if you need it later on ever, we gotta, we gotta talk about your, your build in general. Right? Because watching you climb is plenty of enjoyment. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. And I, I enjoy the Necker climb. Don't get me wrong, but there, there's a limit to to how much how much time and you're willing to invest. Because end of the day, this is this is like this is just like a damage check content, right? It's it's no it's no exciting content in that in that reward. It's just can I do enough damage? Can I can I beef my way through like the painful to then hope that the seekers are not shitty rolls? Because this is this is my one gripe I have with this, right? Like at end of the day, you're you're just wasting your time going through the content, trying to get to the point where you see the seekers, and if then the seekers are shitty rolls, you might as well just teleport out. I mean, if if I for example see a triple teleporter on the seekers, I I can teleport out because it's it's for this build, for for what I do, triple teleporter is just it's just nigh impossible to do. Like we'll always run out of time. So, so might as well just skip. Let's see you get your voice back. Ah, it's always just a couple of days, but obviously YouTube... No, YouTube videos don't care if my voice is, is shoddy or not. They still want... They still want to be created. I need more time. Also, I like shoddy voice more than, than main voice Hoff, so we're, we're... We're good. You know, as long as I'm not in pain talking, I'll, I'll keep talking. Well, this one is a very slow clear on the 14. I mean, th this this time we're really feeling, we're really feeling the drag, Chan. That's a, that's a slow one. I have to hope to get a perfect shrine to actually get this done. have like a minute 30 left or so to kill the seekers that's that's not gonna be enough chat it's got not gonna be enough great one one of the big demons turned out to be the damage reduction dude that's what you want to see have we been at the 14 seekers yet we haven't actually right yeah yeah with this the second time we're doing a 14 we've actually not been at the 14 seekers And we're, bar we're barely keeping ahead of the curve. Oh, well, I guess it's time to sacrifice that damage reduction and squeeze out more damage, huh? Well, let's see how the Seekers are feeling, though. We'll, we'll definitely get there. That's out of question. 
Also, I have to try this with a Litless. If maybe with the more survival opponents, the Litless might be faster. I gave up on my Bone Spear Necker and now a Hoda Barb. I mean, if you if you definitely want to push the contents to its max, then a Hoda Barb just makes sense. Simple as is, you know. If you if you're like you know, I want to see how far I can go in the abattoir, then then just do that. I mean, especially if you're unwilling to swap away from Bone Spear because Bone Spear will just cap out. I mean, even even the main Bone Spear guy that I know that only plays Bone Spear kind of kind of made an infinimus build because that was the only way how he could enjoy the new content. So yeah. Oh, this would be the perfect. This would be the perfect seekers. This, this is my no. This is my perfect almost. Because they're they're just stuck together. Oh, apart from him, he just teleported away. Let's see how much damage can we deal in twenty seconds. I take everything back about this being the perfect one. So, I mean, look at the damage we're taking, though. Like, these three are just not doing anything to us. Yeah, sure. Give, give me two minutes and we kill him. Man, we, we obviously didn't have the time now, but give me two minutes and we can kill him. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay, I need to, to get faster through the dungeon. Hmm... Really high damage reduction. Well, I have everything high. Don't don't you worry about me there. We can change the shadow glyph for the scourge because that that is that's essentially my one. That's a ten percent damage multiplicative difference, but that gives me uh, like this is ten percent less damage reduction for ten percent more damage and more damage over time. It's a, it's a minimal increase in things, but it should it should help with what we're doing here. I also wanted to try this out with um with Litless Wall now. Okay. I can barely craft these sigils. Like you notice my other problem, guys? I'm running out of the sigil dust, right? I I will reach that point where I will have to farm lower lower levels just to have enough sigil dust. I don't want to do that. Like you, you might be surprised, chap, but I do not want to do that. You try variations with how how expelled yeah, yeah, everything. I mean, this this is the perfect version that's only missing the exploiters right now. So we're we're literally missing one aspect that I am physically unable to get. And the exploiters aspect would be another 40% damage multiplicative bonus. That would be very nice to have. But I, I seem to be absolutely physically unable to, to acquire said. Oh, that, that's bad. Vampires is bad. Vampires is very annoying. Don't really want to be bothered with vampires, to be honest. Just move on. Why is vampires bad? Because they just suck. <laughs> yeah. I just said that. I'm not taking it back. No, they, they do their like invulnerability thing and then they don't take damage and then they, they come back and then still invulnerability thing and don't take damage. It's like, oh. Oh, it's under the Giga Nuisance Department. I want to just kill the goat man here right now. Um, we got him. Might as well kill him. Like you, you don't really want to bother like fighting these guys who just continuously keep keep like going invulnerable and and refusing to die, and then they teleport away, and then they teleport in again, and then like see that thing is just invulnerable right now, not taking any kind of damage. The good thing is they do, they just travel with you a while. You know, where where every other reasonable elite would have stopped traveling with you. These vampires, they just keep coming. <laughs> they just they just don't have any chill. I mean, that one vampire is like following us since the very first build now. Which could be annoying if we had any tendency to take damage, which we don't have. We don't take damage. I mean... Who's taking damage here exactly? I'm not sure if we're faster or slower. 
Oh, that was... <laughs> that was maybe a little bit too many poison pools happening there. And I made an almost not so fortunate decision of biting the bullet. I think I wasted way too much time with these lads. With them like teleporting back and forth. Maybe they're, they're going to come with me to the next pack as well. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> told you. I told you, chat. They, they know no chill. They just keep coming. They just keep hauling ass. I want to ask your opinion on Necro. Do you think a Harlequin Black River Selig build will be possible? No, Selig is just trash on Necro. It is just what it is. A uh, Harlequin Crest can be played on most Necros, but you'll be having to sacrifice other um, damage reduction for that. You'll have, like, for example, right now, I would have to, like, for, <clears throat> for um, Harlequin Crest, I would have to put away the corpse explo uh, the, the, the exploding corpses on Blood Mist, but it would be okay, because if I don't explode corpses on Blood Mist, I would get four more ranks in Blood Mist due to um, Shaco, and these four more ranks in Blood Mist essentially would allow me to have the cooldown reduction going on that I'm missing due to not playing the explosive aspect for for um, Blood Mist. So you would kind of like have to you know sacrifice one thing, but you would gain that back due to Shaco, and that's where Shaco would then actually be a boon and not a not a downside but yeah again in, in necro it's kind of like the thing that often it just is not good <clears throat> yeah and melted heart of selig is not worth it i mean you can make builds with melted heart of selig the problem is that every melted heart of selig build has to sacrifice damage for melted heart of selig um and if you do that you end up at the point where you are invulnerable but you are also not killing the seekers so it's like a congratulations for your invulnerability we when we truly appreciate what you're doing there like you know like thumbs up we we uh now 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 the damage you have to sacrifice for that So yeah, that, that's the thing with Shaco, and why, why I'm also not really interested in it. I mean, again, uh, if you if you have it, just put it in and deal with it. Melted Heart is so bad. No, Melted Heart is really good, just just not for Necro. It's it's like it's really really good if you if you're playing if you're playing like not Necro. <laughs> when I, I saw I saw Rob do a tier twenty now with the Melted Heart of Selig. So again, if you if if you can do a tier twenty without it, and if you can survive without it. Why even use it? But yeah, a lot of us get an uber unique and obviously want to use it, but it's not always making the build better. I have a grandfather. Have you seen me use grandfather in 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 freaking Apple 12 Zero? No, because the grandfather is just not good on necro. But I mean, if I could wield a two-handed weapon as a one-handed weapon, you know. We could talk. I could probably make Grandfather work. I mean, if if I could uh, take a 200 weapon and get only 50% of the bonus, and then wield it as a 100 weapon, uh, sign me up. I, I'm I'm straight up. I'm straight up picking up Grandfather. You know, I'm I'm making it work. But I'll be I'll be honest with you. Otherwise, I I will I will not even acknowledge the existence of that item. It's not it's not helping me in any way. Are we a bit faster with the with the shield, or are we just a bit faster because we're pushing through the enemy smarter? I'm, I haven't decided which one it is yet. John. And we're definitely making good progress. We're a bit we're a bit faster. Maybe we get better shrines. Hey, sirs and mams, instead of, like, separating, could you just exactly stick in each other? Are you coming with me now? I appreciate it. It's so fun not wearing, being able to wear Uber Uniques and Final Content. Yeah, but Uber Uniques are also just meant to be used in certain specific builds. 
they are never meant to be used everywhere um like like an uber unique it's not like you like it's it's only logical that you need a whole build for an uber unique because why why would you be able to just slam it in any build and just make it work that's 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 kind of like that's the d delusion a lot of people are having that i have an uber unique it should work straight up but that's that's just not the case right I guess we're pushing a little bit harder right now yes we are but i think we're still not hard enough i mean we're doing a bit more damage due to the change of the aspect that's for sure and i mean a 10 percent multiplicative damage again when you're doing millions of damage is quite useful i remember we're talking about like you, you're doing 20 million damage per second and then you're putting another 10 percent on top of that that is helpful but easy enough Right now, I'm hoping that these elites are enough if I murder all of them. But then again, I'm also like a little bit reluctant to spend my time again with these elites. Because they're all just like making their stupid blood boils and then they're jumping away and then they're jumping away again. And I'm just stuck here trying trying to like kill Jimothy, Jebediah, Fran Fran Francis, and Dave. And we're ending up with a, like another 40 seconds again for, for the boss to spawn. That is, that is the worst shrine that could have possibly been there. Almost like a mockery. This is a mockery. Because we can't do anything with that shrine, right? Pick it up for the YOLOs, but we all know it doesn't just, just doesn't do any damage. Rain. That's is that two fire enchanted? Two fire enchanted I can physically not beat. There's no world. Yeah, it's two fire enchanted. <laughs> no matter how many how many like things I get going on here, right? It's just it's just not enough. We get, we get the damage. We get the survival to do this, Chan. Love how I'm stuck here right now. So we, we get the damage for the Seekers. Right? We just need, we just need more time to get there. I mean, they're, they're just dying. That's good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we, we, we got it. I just need to squeeze out a little bit more. Hmm. You ever try a desecration sever misbuild with the unique boots for sever? No. I'm also not planning to. It's not planning to. It seems a weak wood. I mean, this is tier 14 and this is necro. Like, you're, you're not you're not getting stronger. <laughs> Like, let me let me let me tell you this with the sadness of my heart. This is tier 14 in the necro. I mean, if if you're comparing this obviously to tier nine, right? Like this is a tier nine now. Tier nine now. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to freak you out, but YouTube is almost about to overtake Twitch again. Wee wee. Also, Twitch, don't forget if you did bring a Prime Gaming sub, to use it somewhere. Appreciation. Okay, like this is a tier nine now, just to give you like a, a different feeling, right? We're going for the maximum ver damage version of the build, not not the defense version. Even though I, I have to say I prefer the defense version. And you notice like tier nine is obviously just a, just a wholehearted good joke. I mean, that being said, like obviously the, the rabble clear is a joke. Like you could still die to, to the seekers. So why wouldn't you be able to die to the Seekers? Only because you can go through the Shitters. Tier 9 is so easy. It's also the tier you're farming, by the way. In case you ask yourself, what do you farm? This. I'll check Discord, Neil. I'll be doing that in a hot second. As I'm in Blood Mist. Checking Discord for Neil. 
Oh, you finally, you finally get an Uber unique from from a from an abattoir of Zirkulier. I've actually gotten a, I've gotten so many uniques. Like I think I cleared three in a row, and I got three uniques. No Uber unique though. But it's good to see that technically Uber uniques can drop from AOZ. My general, generally, I feel like every every tier of AOZ should just drop uniques. You know, that's it. The YouTube community is strong here, Collins. It is. The YouTube community is amazing. I mean, we've been we've been like pulling like some crazy numbers. I mean, obviously people are still interested in the AOZ, so so that that helps. You know that that you're making content about that. I mean, the the next streams again are going to be Elden Ring speed runs. Then we're going to be having some. Um, then we're going to be having some Midwinter Blight shenanigans as well. You're on 15? No, we are currently on 14. And we are 14 able to kill the bosses. So we we have the we have the damage to kill them and we have the survivability. But what's lacking now is currently the dungeon clear speed. So I'm not sure if I just have to hope for a very good dungeon for very good shrines or um, if I literally have to level up my glyph. I mean, we, we might be at one of these points where it's just like, if I level up the glyph by two levels, then I get the bonus 5% damage that would be needed to just clear it. You know, it, like we, we might be just in this part of the gameplay loop right now where I'm essentially just have to do that. I mean, you see like we're, we're currently like uh, three minutes into this tier and like now, now the bosses are spawning and we are actually running out of our bone storm. That's fantastic. the number one situation to be in oh this is uh this is gonna be a very bad one because they're all lightning enchanted and i do hate that but as you notice how they're just chunking down right so so this was tier nine this is tier nine and i would need to do now how many tier nines to get it upgraded couple well we can't we can get our exclamation obviously quickly to max level which is the only one that's missing right <laughs> That's a wee bit more damage squeezed out as well in no time. The rest is 21, to be honest. And then we're still missing, like, uh, I have to do another six. So we could do 30-minute farm if we wanted to, to get it there. Did I get my aspect I'm looking for? I'm always, like... I'm always on the lookout, chat. Maybe I'll get that one aspect I'm looking for finally. But it's it's a oh here blood moon breaches, ladies and gentlemen. We interestingly enough, you could actually think about playing the blood moon breaches because it gives you a 10% damage reduction from enemies affected by curse skills, but it gives you also ranks and curse skills and ranks and amplified damage. You would literally just waste the whole aspect for it. <laughs> Which seems so unreasonable to do, right? How much damage on tier 13, 14? We can do a tier 14 again, and I'll show you how well it's going. Again, let's see if I what I can squeeze out. I mean, we squeeze some bonus damage out here. We squeeze some bonus damage out here. Um, I'm thinking about changing these two up. So I've been thinking for a while now to change this one and this one up. To get a bit more desecrated ground damage, but that's not worth it, essentially. Like, more desecrated ground damage doesn't do it. So yeah, 15, 16, we're not going to be doing. Uh, I think tops 15 is currently the plan. But even for 15, like, I think we're at, we're at this story arc of the build where I generally just we're at the story arc where I have to hope for, like, good good shrines. So this is 15 now. Oh, this is good and bad because these are the zombies. The zombies are relatively simple to clear. But at the same time, it is the zombies plus the guys that soak back HP on, on corpses. Okay, we'll take lads with us. When I'm usually, I like the drowned. They're they make they make for good opponents. Especially if they're still coming with me now. 
I'm never sure how much the despawn radius is because I feel like these dudes should actually come with me, but now they're not. No, so I might have just been too, too early turning around. Could everyone please gather up here really quickly? Thank you very much. That's appreciated. You enjoy the endgame grind? Well, that's great to hear because that's how it should be. The endgame grind is fun. I mean, like, you can say what you want, but the game is fun. The game is enjoyable. But we just cranked out so much damage there, it's not even funny. Holy. It's like the, the, the um, summoner guy was just summoning bonus things, right? Okay, now we can't care for one single one. But you notice like our our damage is good, but I feel like we're missing we're missing that little edge to to really go further, right? To make it a more secure one. Because we're barely we're barely staying ahead. I mean right now, for example, these guys you really don't want to fuck with. Because again, they, they heal on the they're they're standing in all these corpses, right? And they're they're gonna be healing. So fighting fighting the bloated corpses is always a a two two edged sword. Because you get them down, but then they heal up, but then they heal up. And I, I can essentially try to just explode all the corpses below them. But I make so many new ones that it's just, just quite hard at times. I'm rather surprised they're dead this easy. That's a, that's a lethal shrine. I like that. I have some good damage or I'm just playing better. Again, coming down to the point, build is good, right? But maybe I just start to play it better because I'm also not used to actually playing an Infinimus playstyle, right? I'm, I'm just really used to playing my, my lazy ass, um, my, my lazy ass Tempest Storm because that's what I did. I, I want to I wanna clear con content without effort. I don't want to, I want to struggle, right? I want to look for my cooldowns the whole time. I just want to lean back and do the easy cruising thingy. That's so where I'm maybe at the point where I finally start to actually play this build good. For all this time. I'm not ready yet. I feel like you need more than two months to beat it. Well, I mean... In order to be the abattoir, let, let's be real. Like so, so for the weakest class, not for the strongest class, for the weakest class to beat it, you'll most likely actually have to have your glyph max leveled, right? And for having to have your glyph max leveled, the amount of hours that you have to put in are ungodly, and they're not achievable by anyone that is not literally dedicating their life to this game, and th that's even more time than the hardcore players are putting in. You know, it's a. So when when the time exceeds the time the hardcore players are putting in, then then we have an then we definitely have a design problem. Okay, are we just are we just way faster right now, or or is it is it just does it just seem like that? Maybe it's the enemies. Maybe the enemies are so easy to kill. Who knows? I'm playing the damage version, but I kind of want to go back to the. To the shield version versus the bosses. For tier farming, we're farming no tier. We're we're right now pushing. This is uh, tier 14 right now that we wanted to get done today, and then we're gonna go off to tier 15. Peace. Yeah, honestly, it's it's mainly when you when you get like a good enemy. Like the 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 dungeon here is good for what I'm doing. The the enemies are good for what I'm doing. But this brings me back to one of the core flaws of the Abattoir Zier. So everything is going good right now, right? Everything is great and the enemy type is fun and, and whatsoever. And then essentially the Seekers spawn and you see their affixes and it's like, yep, and done. <laughs> so you have a good feeling. You have a good feeling. Everything is great and like, yes, things are things are like, this, this is fine. This is nice. This is nice. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And then you're just like, and done.
And I think we've all been there, right? I mean, we've all played enough Abattoir right now to to get to that point where it's literally like the... And all of this just to, just to get like a triple suppressor and just hate life afterwards. And obviously suppressor's not in anymore. But that's how it felt, right? All, all of this work just to just to be facing a vampiric suppressor and be like oh, that's that's it. It was, it was fun while it lasted. You little scumbags. Okay, we are two minutes faster than usual. Right now, as of now. That course bro really has it out for me. He's just he's just aiming for from Narnia and he's just like, yep, I got this. Already getting teleported in the first seconds. It's definitely not on my bingo card of things I do want to have. Is this a triple fire enchantment? It's a double. Oh no, he yeah. Mm. Mm. John, he's he's uh he's um uh, he's making the copies and then the the fire. Yikes. Yeah, that that ain't gonna be it. He's he's like the shadow the shadow clones. Shadow clones plus plus fire and shaman. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, shadow clones plus fire and shaman is a GG. Do the vampire powers count as a curse? Nope, they don't. Okay, that was faster though. Um, so I guess we're gonna be pumping out the. Well, let's swap that over again for listen that. With a new thingy. No, 12, 13, another 14. Worked relatively good for that annoying combination of things. Owned by mirror images. I mean, mirror images and fire enchanted is just nasty. You're going to have X mirror images around you. They're going to be X fire enchanted. What, what, what do you want to do? Let's, let's be real. I think you reach a point where you just physically can't survive this. Mathematically can't survive it. Anything, you know? Like you just get to the point where this is this is just not possible to be on the side of survival. Which is okay. I mean sometimes sometimes you reach that conclusion. By the way, these wolves are like the vampires, Chad. They, they just literally follow you to Narnia. They're actually fantastic at that. They're just literally gonna be coming for, for like whatever from wherever and they're, they're still gonna be hunting you down. But they're, they're usually very good to be. See, like two fire enchants is not a problem. If, unless unless they are like you know unless they are they're the seekers i mean already two fire enchanted seekers are crazy but having like four mirror copies yikes it always feels like you're making excuses though right chan <laughs> that's my problem with the aoz you're, you're like you know it, it just always feels like you're making excuses for yourself everyone it's like oh yeah i'm not like you know there's just three bad affixes what i was supposed to do you know like how, how am i supposed to tackle these four bad affix like this, this just bad luck no bad luck but it's not me it's the dungeon I swear me mom and yes it's, it's the dungeon it's not you it's it's true you're you're right but it like doesn't make it better right it still feels terrible
You dead? You can come with me. This this one is already vastly slower than the last one, but I, I'll blame the dungeon. <laughs> coming coming back to the topic from before chat. We're already vastly slower than the last time, but I will blame the dungeon because why would I blame myself? It's just a bad design. What am I supposed to do? AOZ's goal is to fail. I mean, it's nice to finally have content that shows you that you like the humbling content in that regard, right? You're like, okay, uh, we are powerful. We are good, but you know, like there, there's a limit to how far it goes. So it's cool. I'm enjoying that because I mean, end of the day, you're just like, as soon as you go through tier 100 dungeons without ever getting scratched and you're essentially immortal in tier 100 dungeons, so you're kind of like, you're, you're looking for the next thing. So that, that's that's good it's just still the sadness of grinding up the glyph right now when we just talked about it i i had to do 30 minutes of of tier nines so 30 minutes of tier nines just to be tier 14 and then if it's not enough i would have to add another hour of tier nines just to be to tier 14. But I just, you know, I want, don't want to do nine, so I want to beat a tier 14. <laughs> the whole avatar of Zircon is terribly boring. I think it's nice to to see like how far certain classes can push in, but it only holds until point X, right? I mean, this this is not content to watch until like, so, so if we're now looking at the reality of things, right? So we have it another 30 days out before the next season comes, actually 40 days. So it's another 40 days out until the next season comes. And from a content perspective that creators can create, it's over. Like there is the, there's the Midwinter Blight. So that is the last pieces of content that creators can reasonably create. And that's then over because who's who's gonna watch like Abattoir of Zir content still in a week? Who's gonna be watching? I'm, pu I'm still pushing the Abattoir. You know, <laughs> guess what chat? I'm still pushing it. Like just like I have done the past two weeks. <laughs> I mean, like, right? It's like it's not, it's now it's now interesting, like, just to see how how creators are struggling. But there's soon again these these <laughs> the wall hit where where no one wants to win. I mean, we're already very close to that wall right now. But cur currently, there's a lot of people that just haven't done a lot of AZ yet, and they're still looking for builds. They're still looking how hard does it truly get. The people that are just looking for some information in general for the AOZ, but that one will also be gone by next week. So then then we're down to yeah. So right now, what, what we're hoping for is obviously to get more information on Season 3. So after the Midwinter Blight is done, which is like also two, three days, right? I mean, it's not even worth it an eight minute video. Uh, but after the Midwinter Blight is done, um, yeah, we, we're kind of like, we need Season 3 info. I mean, we got already some of season three info, right? But we just need, need, need more. I want to know what's coming. I want to know the theme, right? I want to get the announcement trailer. I want to I want to get some teasers. I want to have the first campfire chat happening. We all know that they already said goodbye for this year. So for this year, you can't expect anything anymore. So that means already as a as a creator, for example, and as a player, like if you're looking forward to anything, like you can you can look forward to New Year because before and and then New Year, it's going to be like until everyone is back in the office. We're talking about maybe maybe the first week of January at the end, so maybe the 10th of January to really get any information. That's quite long. Until we get like anything. All right? I mean, I'm just being pessimist. Oh no, why did I pick up conduit? Oh, mistakes were made. Spam it away now. Spam it away now. Faster, faster, faster. No one wants the conduit shrine. Uh, uh, uh. Conduit, go away. No way, I don't want you. Uh, stop it. Stop conduiting, please. Go away. Thank you. You know, we're getting we're getting slightly faster 
So the changes we did on the bonus damage over time, the changes we did on the glyph, seem to have weaseled out like another 60 seconds at this point. That's how it feels, reasonably. 60 seconds. Good. I'll take 60 seconds. 60 seconds is long, chat. Don't, don't let anyone convince you different, but 60 seconds is a long time. So, honey, I'll be reading your message in a in a jiffy, but let me let me see that we get these lads murdered. And I'm hoping that these elites should be enough to to push us. If they're not, that would be a problem. Can we get these guys destroyed. I have what like 150 to to kill the seekers. Please be enough. Please be enough. Thank you. Oh no, I have a problem. My my barriers are about to run out. Yep, that's that's bad. Like I have nothing. Not a single piece of cooldown currently. That was, that was ugly. Oh, we're having double teleporter, green. And see, see, their damage is contained, like with all our, with all, all our bone storms going on and all that kind of stuff. We're, we're Gucci. Again, let's con, let's con kill us. And that bonus 60 seconds. Where's my bonus 60 seconds that I want? No more, just that. At least this teleporter comes like straight away back after he goes away. They, they can't they can't kill me that's great okay everything everything is how it's supposed to be ladies and gentlemen just need, need some more you know need some more i don't dare to take all three of them tier one and i did tier 10. you, you gotta you gotta do it what do you get when you upgrade the glove yours is level three four and i still see two percent damage increase so yeah you're that, that's what you're getting I mean, right now my glyph is level 11 just to give you a feeling and mine is with every single core skill taken so i have all the core skills taken right mine is currently at 60 percent um mine is currently at almost 100 percent with 20 percent damage for his elites and a few more resistance against elements which actually makes me able to put this point away and i could get another point of intelligence or All damage. Right? But yeah, really realistically we're we're now at the point where we get to just farm lower tiers, and it's not like tier twelves or thirteens, because we can do tier twelves or thirteenth, but it's not worth it. And what time is it? It's eleven AM. Well, I mean we could we could buy some nines and just try to go through nines as fast as possible. to get like that extra two percent and then try i mean if, if i go get my glyph up to 12 maybe chat we can do the 14 huh then we reached 15 and then we you're back to the same lube it would take 19 days playing 24 7 yes the xp calculation is just vastly off i mean from from the xp calculation you notice that they didn't they didn't mean for you to to get this done but i i just like this is what i don't understand so we can do this moth very easy right i mean the moth is like let's say on an average you're gonna take five minutes to beat an abattoir 
And before that, like a tier tier eight give, did give you what? 2000 XP or 3000 XP. So you take five minutes for 3000 XP, 15 minutes for, for you know, 1000 uh, for, for, for 15,000 XP. Christ, 15 minutes for 9,000 XP, uh, you know, like like 30 minutes for 18,000 and, and so on, like mothing it up, right? And and like we can do this moth, right? Where we're not stupid. And this is this is like insinuating that you actually never die to anything stupid, so that you nail every single run, and you never die to to anything. So so that's the, that's obviously the the thing that we assume. And we can do this moth very easy. I sit down here and I, I calculate this through and you notice, oh man, like it takes, it takes like 300 hours to get the glyph up. That's what the, that's what the hardcore gamer has, right? You know, every, every single hardcore gamer has the amount of time for this. <laughs> and, and like, yeah, I mean, if, if I can do the moth and I can figure out that, that that's too many hours, even for people that have no life. You know, even the student that's living in their mom's basement and forget about their their economy studies, even 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 that person doesn't have the time. Then, well, we we all know it takes too long. There's like this is this is my point. Like you you played you played one hour of AOZ or or let's say you played five hours of AOZ and you notice this takes too long. Right? So what are they doing? This is this is just my question. What was Blizzard doing? If I figure this out after after five hours of grind, has has no one has no one over at Blizzard grinded for five hours? Did they just assume we're more depraved? <laughs> did they did they just assume we're 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 even more depraved than that like you know than we are? probably didn't play even only on paper yeah but even on paper it's horrible so that's where i'm just asking myself the question again did, did anyone ever do that moth did anyone ever care to do it is there no q a team so, so like right is there not a q a team isn't this what a q a team would do at least to to just check if things are reasonably possible So these are the the things that obviously always make you wonder about Blizzard and their games and and the game and the game development that's going on. Like we're what? See, like coming back to the point of of we are assuming now we're farming tier nines without ever dying a single second, right? And well, now we died, so that's already five minutes lost. <laughs> Minji, you get to see there. So, farm uh, Duriel for three hours in the last ten minutes. I got Heart of Selig twice. I mean, now now you can now you can take both and put them in your stash and never touch them. This, this is great, isn't it? I mean, you can take both of these Hearts of Selig. You can put them in your stash and then and then you can look at them. Be like, wow, they look great in my stash. I'm really happy that they, you're there. That melt a Heart of Selig. You're so beautiful. But despite all of these things, ladies and gentlemen, like I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like sad. Despite all of these things, I'm actually enjoying the Abbot 12s here, regardless. I mean, I, I, I put already in total. I think I've sank like roughly 30 hours into the abattoir. I'm, I'm done. Obviously, like today's, as I said, today's my final day of doing any abattoir tries, and then we're waiting for the Midwinter Blight to play Midwinter Blight. But, but hey, I get, I get 30 hours out of this. To, to like try my best to push to to reasonably attempt this right to like try to max out the necro as hard as as possible to to really stretch the limits of my builds um i did all of that i got 30 hours of game time from a from a mid-season update event i cannot complain What we do in between? Well, the the next thing we're gonna probably start tomorrow is uh, Elden Ring speedrun for the Platinum Trophy. 
We already did one of those, but I lost all the footage of it. So I am kind of like, uh, kind of in need of redoing that. Curse, we lost all the footage. I kind of want to do it again. Also, I just need an excuse to do it again, right? I just, I just, I just like, I just like playing Elden Ring. But I think it would also like, since we have multi-streaming right now, it would be good for my YouTube channel to essentially have an Elden Ring speed run. Because, because the thing is, um, like I could now sit down for hours and hours and hours to painstakingly cut an Elden Ring speed run video, right? But I could also do the whole, the whole thing live on YouTube. And then I have a YouTube VOD where anyone that's actually interested in seeing how to speed run an Elden Ring uh, platinum trophy, uh, they could watch it at any time. So this is also like, they like call it evergreen content strategy, you know, per personal, personal challenges plus evergreen content strategies, right? Blizzard mentality? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what Blizzard's mentality was with the Abattoir of Zir. I think, I think Blizzard themselves didn't know exactly what their plan is with the Abattoir of Zir. It's kind of like, yeah, we want to make content that's unbeatable, but at the same time, we kind of want it so so people can at least, you know, beat, you know, beat it. But then, but then like, they, they kind of took the unbeatable a little bit too far. <laughs> so, like, well, we we'll want this to be kind of hard, but then, like, we made it a little bit too hard. I'm sorry, like, yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, the sad part is they had to essentially take current broken overtuned barbarians into the equation, right? And that the overtuned barbarians are obviously not necros or anything at this point, right? It's kind of like we're we're, we're we're having an event that's that's balanced around having some classes broken, some classes not broken, but obviously the broken classes are not allowed to to just. Um, yeah, like they, they are not allowed to just breeze through. So you got to make it so hard that the broken classes are not just making it too easy. But at the same time, you, you like what's with the classes that are not broken right now, right? <laughs> what's with my poor Necro? That's just not broken right now. What's with me? You're farming tier 18 for nine hours now. That that's pain, and that doesn't sound like fun, to be honest, sir. I don't I don't tell you what to do with your time, but it does not sound like fun. Okay, we get another nine. I, I I will I will level this glyph up, and then I'll do more 14s until I'm I'm running myself into that 15, right? The thing is, it's not too hard. It's the defense farmer that's fucking dead. It's the conditional defense. I, f I feel like we sh we should get rid of any conditional defense, distant or close, and just have damage reduction. I mean, you can still have damage reduction while injured if you really want to do that for damage reduction while injured builds. But I think damage reduction, distant or close, has to go for a simple reason that we that the calculation doesn't make sense because close is essentially when I'm standing in you. But if I'm already not standing in melee range anymore, I'm then not close. I count as distance. So I would prefer to have a damage reduction while medium away from the opponent, right? <laughs> and a damage reduction while medium away from the opponent is obviously even silly to speak this out aloud. Right? But, but close is really like you're in melee range, right? You're standing below them. You're, you're literally inside them. That, that's damage from close to make sure it really triggers. Um, but, but if you're, if you're then like, yeah, if you're then like two, two steps away or the opponent teleports away and then you're suddenly not in them anymore, and then it's not damage, damage reduction close. And then you're kind of like suddenly losing 60% damage reduction. And then you die and you're like, kind of like the stupid, you're wearing Shaco. I don't have Shaco. Someone, someone complained this morning on a YouTube video chat. Listen, listen, I, I don't want to say this, but someone complained that a lot of the necker builds are not incorporating shaco and that he's absolutely sick of it that that every fucking creator should get their shit together and start putting shakers in their build it's so fucking easy to get and he doesn't remotely understand why not more builds are incorporating shaco because it's so easy to get he was very angry 
And he could obviously not think for himself to kind of figure out where to put his Shaco in. But, but yeah. We have a Bone Spear build for AOZ. Mm, I was thinking about it, but realistically, Bone Spear will get you as far as tier 9. And you might be able to get tier 10 with the right shrine. So, yeah, I mean, you can just take my Bone God build and do that. It's, it's ready for that. No one will be 25. Well, there is already people doing tier 25s, the Chinese. Um, they, they figured out a trick how with the controller and the broken barbarian, um, you, you can do more damage than you should physically be able to do because there is a bug with whirlwinds, another bug, and the whirlwind with in-between damage triggers. And again, if you're then using, um, if you're using a controller, you can kind of trigger it quicker. So yeah, again, the... <laughs> Again, you can currently push tier 25 if you're using the overtuned Barbarian with a bugged build that allows you then with a controller, but not with mouse and keyboard, to to <laughs> to do a certain amount of damage. Could you shake on your build if you had it? Uh, I could use shake on my build if I had it, yes. But I like it would not necessarily make it stronger. Uh, so right now I said it. If I use Shaco, I have to put the aspect of the explosive mist away. Uh, I will you, you lose 1.5 seconds cooldown reduction, but I will get these 1.5 seconds cooldown reduction back from Shaco itself. So that is essentially how you would use Shaco with this build by by replacing uh, one set of cooldown reduction through a different set of cooldown reduction, and and then and then it could work. Oh, God. I knew this would happen. We'll just get into a point where you just get out of the conduit and then you just randomly die because you just get out of the conduit. Always the same with conduit shrines. That's why I don't like them. You just randomly pull me out. I mean, see, again, tier tier 9 is like is just like from a, from a doability standpoint, very simple. Let's do two more, three more, and we get it done. Any good blood mist build? I mean, you're watching it right now. No, no, Wayne. Not bad. So not the aspect I'm looking for. This is not the aspect you're looking for. I do tier 8 for XP as compared to tier 9. Everything under tier 10 is very fast. So as soon as you eclipse tier 10, you're you're like, you know, you're just slowing down. Uh, that's why I'm just doing 9s mostly. And also you can do 9s to obviously get your sigil dust back up. Okay. I need more time. Oh, how? Am I using the little wall yet? Yeah, we're using. I wasn't sure if I was going for the easy mode build or if I was going for the for the I have to try build. But Warcraft does not reset. Well, what Warcraft has expansions. Still though, our, our farm is in, in no comparison, as you say, to, to like World of Warcraft farms longer for things. But then again, World of Warcraft is also an MMO, as you say. And this is a puny action RPG. I mean, right now you have to just look at AOZ as an option for them to learn. So what, one thing you have to do with the Abbot 12 Zero is please, for the love of God, give feedback and give them all the feedback. I mean, if you if you don't like something, if you do think a lot of fucking things are stupid about the AOZ, then then do tweet it out. The tag has radar in it. Make sure that make sure to keep a civil tone, but make sure that you are heard. Uh, be aware they are definitely listening to the community, which is a good and a bad thing at the same time. 
because sometimes they're just listening to the community without thinking. So, so they're like, oh, everyone is crying for this. We'll just add this, you know, but, but not like, what is the consequences if we do this? So sometimes they're just listening for the sake of listening, but without like the, the greater outlook. Seems a bit backwards. I mean, I, I just have a little bit the feeling because they said they're not balancing anything this season that they're a little bit just chalked this season off already, right? It's just it's just a little experiment for them at the end, like to try some things, but as, like, you know, say, like if they didn't overtune Abattoir of the Year so much, then then every class would be able to beat it better and not just Barb. Who drops the shield? The shield is being dropped by Lord Azir himself. Uh, you get Lord Zero by clearing Legion events and uh, world bosses, and then you get Potent Blood, and that Potent Blood is used to summon Lord Zero. Did they change anything with Blood Surge? Because I tried to do tier 3. I don't know how I fix myself to do. Uh, blood Surge is fantastic. No, why? I mean, if you can't do the tier four capstone dungeon at uh, 55, then you you might just have to level like two or three more levels. I mean, again, doing it with 55 is the optimal, you know, but that doesn't mean you're always going to get it done with that level, depending on also the gear you're wearing. Can't be tier two. What are you playing? I, I beat everything up to tier six and tier eight with blood surge. And that was the old tiers. Now, now I think Blood Surge could beat everything up to tier ten. Oh, I have I have it bad here right now. Can you give me my? Thank you very much. I was scared there for a second to not have my area going on. Thank you, idiots. All well done. Okay, one, one more, one more. Then we're done with that. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Farty, greetings to Singapore. How are you doing? So again, for the people that were asking about Shaco, how would I do it in this build? Right now we have Disobedience, we have Blood Mist Explosion, and we have the Barrier. Now what we need is the Barrier, and we also need Disobedience. So what would happen is Blood Mist goes away. If Blood Mist goes away, I'm losing 1.5 seconds. But four ranks in Blood Mist, and I can show you this actually really good. I currently have a cooldown reduction of 17.9 seconds. If I took four ranks off, I'm at 20 seconds. That means a Shaco would add another two seconds cooldown reduction that I always have, not only when I Blood Mist. So yeah, that's that's literally what you're getting there. Uh, final niner. Final niner. Oh, we're doing this without potion all the time. Yikes. How, are you, how much essence regen are you winning in this build? None. <laughs> None. The only reason why Blizzard did it is because they have nothing to offer. No, Blizzard could have just made another event like the Midwinter Blight. They didn't have to do AOZ. I mean, the reason they did AOZ is to test content like AOZ for the community. I think we have already concluded that the community is not ready for this kind of content. I mean, I mean if, if we're honest, 100%, I don't think the community is yet ready for this. Like, like if they if they didn't do AOZ and they would have done another Midwinter Blight and just given people skins, they would have most likely been more happy than than AOZ content. This is this is this is the harsh reality maybe of things right now. So maybe maybe next season with the leaderboard, there's going to be something. Uh, but yeah. Those are releasing content without testing. I mean, they, they put out the AOZ for creators at BlizzCon, but that's obviously just creators at BlizzCon and they just had like, I don't know, one hour with the new content. That's not really an in-depth testing to give proper feedback. It's more like a, 
You know, is this interesting? Yeah, sure. Fine. Leaderboard will be a giga shitstorm. Well, leaderboards are class gated. Okay. That means that the leaderboards right now, they're only going to work in the gauntlet dungeon. The gauntlet dungeon is like AOZ, but different. And I mean, that's already good because if the leaderboard would be global, not class specific, that would obviously be annoying because how, 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 how are it like the classes are not balanced, right? Are the classes are going to compete against each other? So that that's already fantastic because I I don't I don't want to compete against a bard. <laughs> I don't want to compete against a sword. I want to compete against other necros. I want to know if their necro build is better than my necro build in a leaderboard. That's that's what I care for, right? I don't, I don't care to enter a room, and I'm not going. And you know, when I enter a bar, I'm not going to the barbarian table. When I enter a bar, I'm going to the necro table. And that's where I'm spending my time drinking. For leaderboards, I don't think buggy builds matter because that is the nature of leaderboards, to be honest. Like, I, I don't know how to say this better, but if you if you have a leaderboard, then like, obviously, if there are buggy builds right now, you should play them because that, that gives you the biggest advantage for the leaderboard. And that's, that's the nature. Play the most broken OP shit tier super awesome meta thingy. Like the number one player will be that that uses the the best build, not not, and the best build in this case might be a broken build. But that that's just that's just how it is. That's like welcome to leaderboard grind, right? That's complaining that you have to use uh, like a, a fast car to win a race. Like oh no, I wasn't aware I had to use a fast car. Yeah, surprise Sherlock. Who, who would have guessed? Oh wow, that, that was a lot of um, wherever I stood in there. There was a lot of wherever I stood in there. Oh god, we have one guy left. I hate it. Done. Thank you very much. And leveled up, ladies and gentlemen. It's 2.22. We're level 12 right now. And the damage upgrade is absolutely incredible. You won't believe this, but we're ready for tier 14 because we went from 98.2 to 99.8. Thank you. Did you play D2R and recommend it? I mean, D2R is very nice to play through. It was super fun. I, I really, 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 like, I, I enjoyed it. Maybe tainted by my old things, but I played it through one single time and then I put it in the trash. I don't know if I can see my D2R playtime. No, I don't think I can. I mean, I, I have it here. Like, where is it? I don't even know where to see D2R. Uh, they're immortal. Uh, they're D2R. See, I, I, I beat it, but but yeah, that's that's it. I'm not gonna touch it ever again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the tier 14 now. Uh, we gotta th think about which potion to take. Uh, which potion will make me faster? I mean, like, there's no there's no bonus damage over time potion, is there? So we're ready to do 14. I'm running quickly for the toilet, and then we start. Okay. Okay, also, we're going to get this weird person that's talking about the Gold Olympics timed out. We're back.
Okay. I got my chocolate Santa in case I fail. Can. Someone finished tier 10 on pulverized red. Hmm. I haven't even attempted the Abo 12 Zero on Pulverize. The problem with Pulverize is you're going to be able to go up to tier 10 probably, but not past tier 10, to be honest. I don't see it. Okay. Oh, this is a great dungeon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, any potion? I only have a critical strike damage potion, Chan. I don't have anything else going on. I, I really dislike it when these giant snakes are the damage reduction guys. They just take so long time to die sometimes. Waiting just for these dudes to lose their damage reduction. Not even moving. I can't expect me to move around here. Not happening. I'm not ready. Oh, I'm I'm at the end. Yikes! I thought it's going further there. There was a mistake. Eating chocolate Santo. I want to play Minion Necro. I mean, you can play in a Minion Necro. There's no no inherently bad things about playing Minion Necro. You can just forget about doing the Abattoir of Zir. I mean, you, you can do the, the number one, number two, number three, probably. Yeah, maybe the first three of Minion Necro. But I'm not even willing to go through that pain to experiment with that. Because, again, there, there's, like, the right tool for the right job, correct? And if you're playing Mini Necker in the Abba 12 Zier, you're, you're, you're just literally trying to, to hammer in a nail with a sausage. Why, whatever that is something you want to do, I mean, it, you, you will get the nail in at some point, or you will wreck the sausage to a point where the sausage is just demolished. But, you know, the job will get done. But it's definitely not the right tool for the job. Up to you if you want to mollusk the sausage. I need more time. You can't be tier two with minion necro. I mean, I'm not sure how bad these seekers really are for that. You know, it's just that, like the neckers, they the, the, the minions, they don't they don't provide you anything for this, right? They don't they don't provide you the damage. The the only cool thing about minion was that with with the um. Ring of Mendel, and you could do a lot of burst damage and burst things down. But we all know that burst damage in a in a world where you need sustained damage as much as possible doesn't help you to beat the Abattoir of Zir, right? Burst damage doesn't help you with anything here. I think Bloodlands is any good for the Abattoir? Nope. Blood Surge does work wonders because you can just really zoom through the Abattoir at a breakneck speed. Breakneck speed? Is that, is that the word? Yeah. So you can really zoom through the abattoir at, at a very nice speed with with um blood search we did it it's it's worth it um but yeah like like blood lands will always be slower than i wish that blood uh that that poop mancer was a bit more successful so we tr we did try poop mancer poop mancer is the version that uses blood wave as a shadow form to essentially do damage that one that one was really fun to to play a high recommendation on on that one but it wasn't just working as well as i wanted it to i keep fat fighting fingering my my i kind of want to take the shrine but the dude is just standing in front of the shrine so screw it <laughs> screw it i wasted enough time here 
No taking shrine for me. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that Bloodlands would do very well. But hey, you, I, I'm always ready to be convinced different, you know? I'm never, I'm never 100% about what I'm saying. Like if you, if you want to convince me that it's possible, like be my guest. I'm all yours. Snuffed out, did you believe? Can an already handle the game? The game is very graphic card heavy so better graphic card better performance but yes an rtx 3060 should be able to handle this game i mean may maybe you're gonna play it in 1080p but that's about it right I mean, yeah, season two is all about hotar and bl sorts no i disagree i mean you're saying that like for for this content right now but honestly like with necro we have eight different builds and each build could do every single piece of content uh I mean, the season is only about that. If you want to be the strongest possible class, yes, then you're right. But most people are not interested in that metric even remotely. Right? I mean, I've, I've never, like, I always play Necro. I, I don't care, like, how strong Source or Barb is. Doesn't doesn't matter to me the slightest from a, from a game enjoyment perspective or overall perspective onto the game. And we also do not have any leaderboards, so I'm not sure why you would be, you know, wasting your time with playing the strongest. All corpses eaten. These guys are being bullied as much as the Seekers, to be honest. They just want to live. But we ain't allowing you to live. Okay, like, upgrading that glyph by another 2% gave us even more time, Chad. I can say what you want, but we're, we're, we're zooming a wee bit faster. Or again, I'm just playing better. <laughs> I, I want to say I'm just playing better, you know? Can I, can I do that, Chad? Can we, can we just pretend? So we're actually not doing more damage. I just have gotten the better player. I'm just, I'm just superior being. I am just an alpha tier gamer. It has nothing to do with more levels on the glyph. Just me literally being better. You have an RTX and you're locked at 144 FPS, right? But isn't that, isn't that fantastic? What do you want more? Come on, let me kill these a bit faster now. And let this also be enough, please. Nice. I'm not ready. Wait, this is double teleporter. I don't like it. Okay, the, the rogue is teleporter. That's actually really good because the rogue just teleports away and then comes back. Ah, let me in. Let me in. Again, we're not dying. I need a damage over time potion. Anything. Just squeeze out more. Like a few more drops of damage. Um, I, I really stood in that, huh? Did 
you all just come together, please? Instead of roaming around. Like the, that one guy here, he's now standing like on the other side of the of the thingy and he's just essentially took like all the time now to teleport back in. I don't know what he was doing, what his plan was. Secret evil, you know, super villain lair where he was just sitting in. Yeah. Okay, we got this. Again, just a just a mere just a mere upgrade the glyph question, I guess. So we, we went for even more damage. We have the survivability. How do you get 22 skill points? That would be with the with Shaco. That I sadly don't have, Jeff. Um, that would bring you to 22. I mean, essentially, your upgrades are ring for plus three, size for plus four, amulet for plus three, so that's already plus 10. And then Shaco would be another four. And Pan's another four. So it's kind of like you can get plus 18 points in total. Not enough damage. Yeah, but damage is just the glyph. Right? So, I don't have enough damage. But I just literally get the glyph and, and that's it. So, just a mirror. Do I want to do I want to do this to myself? You know, do I want to grind this? Hmm. What do the vampires count as? Can I use undead slime for the vampires, guys, for 20% more damage? Or does that not work? <laughs> A fine balance there. Never tried. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was tier 14. So we're currently in the, on the verge of beating tier 14. Again, survival is there. Uh, for damage, I would like to have another aspect to kind of get even more damage, but I'm not finding that aspect, which is sadness in itself. <sighs> yeah. Very close. Hmm. New mates, the cooldown reduction does not look like you're using Evade with Flicker Step. I do use Evade with Flicker Step every now and then. But it's mainly Decrepify plus uh, damage. Lucky it. Please make a Druid build for AOZ. We have a Druid build. I mean, if you if you really, really want to, I can quickly swap over to the Druid and just do the first level of the AOZ. It should be possible with the build I have. Class we're using now. Uh, we just have an elixir that gives us 20% more damage versus vampires and undead. And I'm just hoping that that works against the <laughs> against the guys for no reason. So I could do 20% more damage because right now, right now I just need a little bit more time as I'm going through the dungeon. So I just need to beat the dungeon a little bit faster. And uh, I mean, again, damage reduction wise, we're on top. Damage reduction wise is fantastic. So I'm, I'm literally just in need of a wee bit, you know, damage boost. That is not the glyph because right now I'm, I just don't want to farm the glyph further. Like I farmed the glyph already like one level. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just sit in tier nines now until I just get another like two or three levels with a glyph just to be able to beat the respective tier for sure. When I could also get lucky with a shrine because right now we have never had a shrine for the fight. So just give me a blast blade shrine and I have beaten it straight away. But how does that feel? Does that feel you really beat it? Or does that feel you like cheated your way to glory? Because honestly, it would feel better if I would beat it like without a shrine. At least without a blast wave shrine because blast wave shrine is just cheat code, right? I mean, call me stubborn if you want to. That's that's what I think. Are you using often for more DPS? Nope. 
I literally tried an offhand compared to the littlest wall and it is roughly the same. There is not much of a difference. I tried both builds essentially exactly for that reason because I know the question always comes. Why? No, why? Why are you using Litless Wall? Why are you not going for an offhand? And then, like, it's it's literally I tested it. Can I save? What I would need is the exploiters aspect, so that one would come in extremely handy. Because the exploiters aspect will give me exactly what I'm looking for, but I am not getting that because. <gasps> The explorer's aspect would be a 40% multiplicative damage for the for the boss fight against the Bloodseekers. So that one would be exactly what I'm looking for. I need more time. Do you think Doombringer would be a viable option for more shadow damage? Uh, the problem is if you use Doombringer, then you have to swap the build from the damage over time build over to the x -Files build because the x -Files build is uh, crit heavy uh, because Doombringer is a lucky hit proc that can crit and if you're just using Doombringer to just trigger a little bit of bonus damage it's not worth it then definitely the uh, Black River is better because look at the amount of corpses that we have here right now and I even with Black River I am not able to explode this amount of corpses I mean I'm exploding four corpses or five corpses with every corpse explosion to just make every corpse explosion even stronger right and like due to the amount of corpses I'm not even able to explode all of them uh, so that's where Black River is definitely better here in this scenario, right? By the way, we're making like very good timing right now. Too, too long time dealing with the elites. Well, but elites push this really forward. When I, I've tried only killing normal minions and just completely ignoring the elites, but I have to say, um, it always feels better if you actually kill the elites because they, they push the progress bar so much more forward. Especially these spider guys, they die so easy. It's definitely an advantage on the enemy type because the spider guys, they, they don't have any special abilities, right? The spider guys are just, they, they are, they exist, that's it. There's no, no like secret, secret juice to them. No secret, like we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll stun you, you know, we'll get invincible for a second. Now they're, they're just, they just exist and that's it. Uh, would you recommend the Diablo 4 for a World of Worker player looking for a side game? Yes, yes, sure. Honestly, like Diablo 4 is even very fun to be played if you only have minimal amount of time to put in. Uh, let's say even if you're playing it next to Diablo, so let's say you're waiting for your Diablo raid to continue and you're cranking out a quick nightmare dungeon, that would actually be possible. So it's even a game you can you can play on the side, right? I mean, we, we all know how, how World of Warcraft can sometimes be when you're just waiting for something or waiting for someone or whatsoever in an online game, right? And then just, just have another game running on the side. Why not? Wow, we, we just made this here so much faster. Like, you, usually we ended this at 1 minute and 50, and now we almost have, like, 4 minutes to spare right now. That's crazy, Chan. I mean, if we're if we're now like on top of everything, not having some unlucky affixes going on, right, right, Chan? These are never going to be enough. I already have to push a little bit further. And these could be potentially enough. Push this over the edge. Oh, come on. Really? You're not enough to push this over the edge? This is bullshit. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Two sorks. Fantastic. We all love to see him. Alone gathering you here will be will be impossible. Yep, 
so so she she's a teleporter sorg that just literally <laughs> teleports out yep that was a good start two sorgs i might as well just quit that's unlucky a little friend robbed but in a good way robbed well, let's see if we get a good iteration like this again without two sorgs I mean, Magina, there, there was nothing, there was nothing I could do. Like, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to beat two swords and especially not a sword with teleporter. That, that's just it. Like there, there's no, there's no world. Not, not as a necro, you know, like maybe, maybe if you're a different class, but this is, this is just as simple. It will work. It's not a matter of perseverance or being, being, uh, being more stubborn or anything. It's just, that's it. A heart is Duriel. You can still make level 100 or best to get some help. Duriel is not hard. I mean, Dur Duriel gets hard when you actually go there with friends. Because Duriel, Duriel's HP goes so crazy up. I mean, let's, let's say you're fighting Duriel alone. And he has like, a, like, let's say, 50 million HP. Let's say you fight Duriel with four people and he suddenly has like one billion HP. That's the thing with Duriel. Always, always like if you if you if you at least want to have a fight versus him right it's <laughs> the thing like it's it's fun to do duriel with friends but at the same time it's kind of like if as soon as you have a druid or as soon as you have a barb or a sork with you then like every every joy gets just sucked out of the fight i mean someone said it's it's like the season of barb and sork but let's be real whenever i played together with a barb or sork i was bored Especially during these boss fights, like my, my most fun I had was like killing any uber boss with four necros. That, that's just because you're, you're actually fighting, you know? Being the weakest class has its has its merits because you, you actually get to fight the fights. You get to have the fun, you know? <laughs> you get to not just click the button and, and things are instant dead. No, we're, we're, you know, you get to have a little bit of fun. You just please let me through, Jesus. Broken poison Drian is over in a few seconds. Yep. There, there's some some funny things i mean it's lucky that my community is mostly necro so whenever whenever we're actually asking for for help you know when they're like hey do you want to do durial we, we kind of end up mostly being just for for necromancers and that's that's kind of like funny i like that makes me happy Consider using aspect of the dem to push the dungeon for a few more extra seconds not 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 crazy thought Aspect of the dam would be using uh, Blood Mist and Iron Maiden together for 40% multiplicative damage, but I, I generally just can't be asked to swap my items around that much for every single try. I guess call, call, me, call me lazy, you know? There's a level I'm swapping I'm willing to do, and it's exactly one item. AKA my my uh, my off and off or not.
relentless wall. Not willing to swap around, uh, around with skills. And our time is good. I'm happy if I if I get there with three minutes left, I, I have the time to kill the lads. And we just have to hope to not get three sorks again. Because we all know that three sorcerer thingy, that, that two sorcerer thingy was god awful. Oh, you're so dim. I'm still reeling, chat. And that that one level in the it's it's always funny when the one level in the glyph actually gives you so much more damage right like how, how is that how is that a thing that these these puny two more levels did so much for us but hey it is a thing right the puny two more levels did truly do something and a lawn We can take all of you with us in here, right? Not sure if that's going to be enough, but that's that's a lot of lads. Probably not going to be enough, right? Yeah. So what is the fastest now we've actually gotten there? I think three minutes, correct? Three minutes was now the fastest we've gotten to the blood seekers. Can I get that dude with us? I'm gonna spam corpse explosion more. I am spamming corpse explosion more. I mean, it's also being automatically spammed, sir. I mean, I, I can't do more than hold my but two button down. So in case you don't notice this, but I'm I'm holding my two button down. So you don't you don't see corpse explosion um light up that much because i'm just holding the button here like here see my character go like twitchy that's me holding the button down now he's like Ooh! i'm not, not pressed to see i'm holding it oh this is gonna be awful in here Oh, two teleporters. Three teleporters. Yay. This is not awful at all. I mean, at least it's not Sorks, I guess. At least it's only three teleporters just teleporting out of the range of everything consistently and just getting away from me. That's fine, isn't it? For someone who does damage over time in a certain area. As long as I can keep like these guys contained somehow. <laughs> Did you just say as long as I can keep these guys contained somehow and all three just decided to vanish from the face of the earth? Yep. That's that's great. This is by the way the main the main mistake they did by removing Vampiric and Suppressor Chan. So, so what happens when you just remove Vampiric and Suppressor, but don't do anything about the potential combinations happening? The amount of times, like, you get things like, you know, Triple Teleport or some other shit, uh, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, so now we don't have Vampiric and Suppressor, but we have the opportunity for your guys to just completely move out of the sources of damage the whole time. That's, that's also alternatively unlucky. When they can't kill me, that, that, that gives me joy, you know, that, that I'm essentially like able to just stay in this. So we, we, we know the build is ready for this kind of content. We, we are ready. And if you could just stop teleporting out like goddamn monkeys, we would be happy. 
Another 10 minutes wasted chat for an unfortunate coming together of blood seekers. But we'll get there, chat. We'll prevail. We'll, 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 we'll get some like triple barbarian or something like this. That's still my sexy hope I'm having. Just give me triple barb. Couldn't be so hard. I guess triple bar or double barb and a rogue. Rogue's actually really good because ro rogue uh, kind of pushes you at least, you know? We can't die. How do you recover essence so fast? There's a little trick to it. If you're using Black River, you explode. A bunch of corpses, correct? And every corpse you explode. Is your six essence. Oh, yeah. If we try Fist of Fade, mm, my problem is if I now try Fist of Fade, I don't have Shadow Bone Storm. But hey, just for the YOLOs, if you want to see it, where's my Fist of Fade? Well, the problem is, so I have no Fist of Fade. I had a Fist of Fade. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, 240%, 240%. We drop to 40% is robbery. Mm -hmm. The fist of fate is horrible, by the way. I'm not a believer. But just for just for our entertainment, right? Where's the last one in my blind? I got Ferocity, Divinity, and Where's Eternity? I'm blind. One, two, three, four, five. Here you go. Or we disenchant that glove accidentally. Yes, a friend can unlock tier one AOZ for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you please go back? Thank you. Okay, I can craft another 10 14s. Then we're out of 14s, Chad. Then we're out of any any crafting materials. Okay, Fists of Fate for the YOLOs. Because Chad asked, why not Fists of Fate? Uh, it does tons of damage when it procs. It does a red ball when it procs. Okay, I've never actually seen it proc. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not ready yet. Horrible dungeon. They're saying some random red procs when it procs. We've actually never seen Fist of Fates proc, essentially. Keep in mind, chat, we just lost our Shadow Bone Storm, so we're just using a normal Bone Storm right now. Which is always something I tremendously dislike. Because if we're already going to play Bone Storm, we might as well turn it into Shadow. I don't know if it's procking or doing any damage.
You know, should, should drink a lucky hit chance potion. Fist of Fate don't have anything to do with lucky hit. Fist of Fate just does what Fist of Fate does. Also, I do not have a lucky hit chance potion. I already used them all up. For Fist of Fate, you need max attack speed possible. Well, we are already having um, Ravenous running with a huge chunk of movement speed. So that got to be what it is. The only thing I find funny about Fist of Fates is like the Daze proc right now. And that, that, that's definitely working. Oh no, Conduit. I made a mistake. And I don't like it. I press Conduit Shrine. Do do do. Mistakes were made, chat. Mistakes were made. I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down considerably because of the Shrine. Ugly, ugly. I'm not, I'm not sure if we're doing more damage or not, Chad. My Fist of Fate obviously has a randomness component that you that you can never overlook correctly, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're doing more damage or not, Chad. I'm, I'm not, not sure. And also, how much is contributed by us essentially playing like like? Uh, Not not a not a shadow bone storm right now. I miss like seeing any like cool impact of the fist of fate, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm not feeling it. The chance to daze and immobilize are nice if I wouldn't already do like a gazillion um, CC of anything. I mean, let, let's be real. I'm, I'm already CCing to the max. I'm stunning with my shadow the whole time. I mean, the immobilized, I guess, could be funny for for like uh, keeping the seekers even more in spot. But I, I like, yeah, I mean, I'm, oh God, Jesus Christ. What was that? Should, should never deal that amount of damage to me. That's when you're getting greedy and you're just like, ah, what's what's the worst that can happen? They're killing me? Yeah, that that's the worst that can happen, sir. I feel like we're slower, but this might also be down to using using no shadow bone storms because my, my bone storm is now not getting any more shadow damage bonus. But I could could honestly not say. Five minutes. Which build do you do more damage with Bloodbass? Well, what do you mean? Which build? I mean, this is currently the the dot dot build, where we're essentially just going for maximum dot damage, damage over time. Also, I truly don't know how Fist of Fate actually worked with dot damage. I'm honest with you. I've never never looked into that. Fist of Fates is even worth it of dot damage, or if it would be better with Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. You know? Maybe it's like just a billion times better with Ixfeld. Who knows? And it doesn't it doesn't work with it really, right? I mean even if it doesn't work with it, we're still surprisingly fast for having put away one of our main aspects that I always kinda want to wear. So we could we could technically try something out different if if actually I could tinker around with the gloves and do something. So we put on we put down our shadow ass bag, and it doesn't seem to be impacting us as much as I thought it would. I 
I totally want to run back to that. Oh, I, I fell it on that opponent. Stein. Totally want to run back to this Blast Wave Shrine, by the way. Did you drop X-Files for God Dot? Yeah, but you have to understand that the that the Dot build is essentially utilizing Dots as much as it can. Um, whereas the um, the X-Files build is utilizing crit as much as it can. So now what what are you what are you doing? Are you critting or are you dotting essentially, right? Honestly, I switched the Fist of Fates off, guys. They feel horrible, and they don't do it. But uh, we have another two minutes left, and I have a Blast Wave Shrine there. So, I mean, if, if everything comes together fortunate now, and the gods speak to me, and, you know, the stars align, there's a, there's a world where this could work, huh? We just have to kill Jimmy, Timmy, Jebediah, Dave, Francis, Andrew, and the gang. Get these, get these scumbags wiped from the face of Earth. Now blowing through all of our cooldowns. I hope they're going to be enough. I doubt it, kind of. Could be. Oh, it's enough. I'm not ready yet. Rain. Was it enough, chat? Yeah, Mäuschen, was ist? Warte, Sekunde, ich bin gleich bei dir. Ja, was? Oh, ihr habt aber tolle Locken, Mädels. Sollen wir euch mal, sollen wir euch mal zeigen? Aber toll aus. Ja, du siehst von da, du musst, von da ist die Kamera. Kamera, dann musst du deinen Kopf ein bisschen breit. <lacht> Den kannst du nicht locken. Toll aus. Ja? Da. Muss man. Uh, twins, no, they are three and four year old, three and four year old. And we actually have something really cool happening today. So my, my daughter has a, uh, they're, they're going with a kindergarten to a, um, uh, to a retirement home and they're, they're having a play, you know? So just, just a little fun play where they're going on stage and they're doing a little thing to just, to just make the old people happy. You know how it is, right? And the fun part is I, I used to do this as a child too. So, uh, you know, for the church, actually. Screw the church nowadays, but... <laughs> Back in the days, you know, that, that's what I used to do. Go on stages, do plays, uh, say poems, make old people happy. 
you know, the usual. Uh, and now my daughter's doing that too. It's kind of cool. I'm very proud of her. Uh, are you using a filter? No, I'm not using a filter. It's it's just the the color balance, you know. <laughs> so so if the colors are, if, if the camera's a little bit too yellow, it's it's literally because because my my color balance is just shin. Um, nothing else. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we we just barely get this done with a blast wave shrine, but I I am there. I am him. We we have it. We uh, our goal was to get tier 15, and now technically the goal is to also beat tier 15. One thing we learned though is, chat. So one one thing we learned painstakingly right now, that uh, the that the fist of fate are useless. So fist of fates can go away. One thing I need to try out though is I want the barrier damage on barrier conceded aspect. And do I have another conceded here? Conceded, 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 conceded. Your mom. I have a 23 one, yeah. What I'm gonna do with this 23 one now, I'm gonna put it on my offhand. Mm, because I wanted to, so I, I think the offhand is the only thing I'm going to swap because conceited should be faster for pushing the dungeon. And I keep blood soaked actually on the ring. I can use conceited for dungeon pushing. And then for the seekers, I swap back to the shield for a better, for a better pull there, okay. That's a tier... Did I craft a tier 15? We didn't craft a tier 15. Uh, did you level the glyph? Yes, I did level the glyph. But again, this is also my last day of doing the abattoir. So I don't really mind if I miss the glyph level, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not planning to do more. I'm, I'm, I'm not Rob2682. Very respect to him for what he's doing. But I'm not a barb. I have no I have no inclination after, after today to touch the abattoir again. I have my goal achieved, my personal goal to really make it to 15. I would love to beat 15 as well. If I can't, that's okay. As goal, by the way, thank you for the four months of Prime Gaming. Thanks for being our second sub today. Appreciate it. So chat, don't forget to use your sub or dabbers if you have them. We do, we do love to see that. So yeah, right, right now the plan would technically be that we're essentially using the conceited aspect to just do a wee bit more damage for tier 15, right? I like how they're not taking any damage. You know, this is like 15 in comparison to 14 and it's just like okay are they are they actually taking damage yumala thank you very much for your support thank you for your subscriptions where do you get the red sigils from you craft them you know also what just happened did someone just gift subs away and my whole system is kind of like buggy and they're not showing that correctly I think something broke. I'm not entirely sure what broke. Yeah, that's that's like quite quite a little HP boost here. So we, we notice again we are we're back to the gameplay loop of if I want to be tier 15 right now, I would have to do four tier nines again to get my glyph one level up. And if I get my glyph one level up, we might do enough damage to beat the next tier. Right? That's that's what we're that's what we're realistically now now add. Your host video and automobile and you know that, that being said, coming back to oh I'm grinding all the Uber Uniques. I mean Marty, it do, it doesn't hurt to have all the Uber Uniques. I mean like at least you you have them for AOZ. But obviously, like, I'm doing a build right now that does not use a single Uber Uni, right? I have no Shaco, I have nothing. Like, I have I have all the gear that you can humanly get normal without spending, like, a billion hours of Durio. I mean, the only thing I have from Durio is actually Black River and Flicker Step, right? These these are the things I have from Durio. And we've been, we've been, we've been pushing with this. Does Blight slow? Yes, Blight slows natively. And blight, blight slows natively, and Blight also hires your overall damage by 15% multiplicative, depending on what you actually skilled there. Yeah, we're, we're going to be 
barely able to reach the seekers in 15 right now so it's truly like if i if i want to reach the seekers reliably i would just have to level up my glyph that's 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 what we're feeling here right now right what do you use shaco if you had it you can use it in this build again the difference of shaco or not shaco is uh not getting the explosive miss cooldown reduction anymore which which is okay like we we still we have enough cooldown reduction so you could just use shaco straight away but you notice how far we have gotten without shaco so it's like yes if you had it for this build it will work but you truly just simply don't need it because <laughs> because the use of shaco is being fulfilled by also simple a simple aspect of explosive mist I mean, Necker is just insane, honestly. Like, well, one thing that got to be said about Necker in comparison to other classes, like, every single Necker aspect is insane. There, there's barely there's barely any shitty offensive aspect, right? All of them are just amazing. The curse, the curse of, of Necromancer. Dun, 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 dun. Get it destroyed. Whoop. Oh no, I made a mistake. Yeah, we went we went to the to the horrible glyph. No no no, why did we do this? Oh no. Come on, you, you faster, faster, run out. I can't, I can't even be bothered with them. I just wasted my time here trying trying to like weasel them lower with the Conrad Shrine, and now I can't even be bothered to to like kind of finish them off because, because they're they're so annoying, right? You're on level eleven. I cannot fight the bosses. They one shot me from very high damage reduction and armor. Um. Probably at lower levels too. Well, it might be that you just don't have enough damage reduction or your damage reduction is conditional. So the question is, what damage reduction do you have? Do you have damage reduction while fortified? Do you have damage reduction while close distant? So it might be that you're just not standing in the right um, distance to your opponents that you're supposed to be standing with, with your damage reduction. It might also just be that you don't have the damage reduction you think you actually should have. You know, like you're, like, like you're telling me now, I, I have enough damage reduction. And then I'm like, when we, when we check your damage reduction, it's kind of like, is it, is it though? Is it though? You know, is it though? I just want to see the seekers give me a cool shrine something but yes i mean I, I just i just finished a level 14 right and then when we did a level 9 i still died to a one shot i mean what happened is essentially that one of the seekers teleported on me and and like then i died i don't know from what but i just got teleported on and instantly died so no, no matter how far you've gotten in the abattoir no matter how damage reductive you are there's always a world that these things just happen to you. Yeah, this is the first time. So tier 15 is now the first time where I'm where I'm hitting a hard damage wall. I mean, 14 wasn't anything compared to this, right? In 14, we could reach the Seekers. And then with a few tweaks and twerks, we could actually reach the Seekers even, even better. And we're even playing a higher damage version than the version from before. Guys, keep this in mind right now. We're even playing a higher damage version than the version from before. So, think about it. For some reason, a few sentences how this build works. I'm playing Bones for Necro and it seems not really good for AOZ. Bones for Necro is horrible for AOZ. How does this build work? You're using the Crepify for cooldown reduction, then using Blood Mist to stay in Blood Mist. We're using, putting everything in damage over time, shadow damage. So we have 18 points in Corpse Explosion right now, plus 18 points. We could get up to 22 points, 23 points, I think even. 
um to to just boost the corpse explosion like to to maximum damage and then essentially we're we're working with just hiring our shadow damage and all our shadow blight components uh in the paragon board to versus the blood seekers continuously stay in the blood mist never be out of the blood mist as you see my cooldown is already ready as i'm going out and then be essentially able to just overwhelm these these nasty annoying blood seekers that that is how we're playing it that's kind of like how it's done and it works plenty well there's a few tricks to it like where, where you put your skill points that you essentially always have enough stuns going on because you obviously want to have your opponents take um uh not be able to move right you want to have them continuously locked down is that that's like what you want to do oh, this is really sad being like being like 10 minutes in and, and that's that's like it you know 10 minutes and no no further I wish Blood Search was as good as this. I mean, we can try with Blood Search now at tier 9. I mean, we just notice I'm hitting the hard wall here right now. Like, there, there's there's nothing to talk about anymore. We, we're, we're just, we're just like, we have to just level our damage. Or I have to get the Exploiter's Ass back. So if I want to beat tier 15, it's now, it's now grind. Simple. Like, I have the survivability. I have the damage. So any, any further abattoir progression for me is at this point grind it's it's not it's not like it's not skill right i mean still skill to actually beat the bosses to outlast them but but like we, we've reached the point where where it's just sim a simple grind and and skill is secondary and that's where that's where i'm tapping out you know don't don't, don't need to don't need the grind I'm, I'm happy i've proven myself i've gotten myself to the point where we want to be uh might as well die so, uh, Blood Search again, should be able to get 10 maybe done. Okay, let's, let's try, let's try a tier 9 just for the YOLOs with Blood Search. We're going over, and then we do Druid as well, because people were actually asking for Druid, right? People were asking, Bounty, Bounty, how's, how's Druid? How's Druid? I'll show you how Druid is. Okay, we got everything going on. I mean, again, the, the maximum I did with this was tier 8, but that's the old tier 8. So technically, I should just do a tier 9 while, while, while snorting a line of cocaine and falling asleep. Let's see. Your chat is frozen. Hi, Maddie. I'm Marty. We can see you. Okay, blood surge. Zero expectations on how this is going to go, just for your... I remember when I started doing this build and I did some tests against the dummies, right? And and that was essentially me like testing the build, like does it work against dummies? Does the infinite essence production work? And the answer is it does, you know, <laughs> the infinite essence protection works. Cause that, that's the whole plan. Why, why we're doing this build that when the upper 12 zero drops, that we need to have a build that essentially can just infinitely produce essence and never run out of it. That was the goal. And you might notice already where this build is working, right? The build is fun. The build is doing what it's supposed to do. 
But if you compare this already to the shuttle build and how well the shuttle build did, you do notice that there is a qualitative difference to the shuttle build, right? I mean, this is obviously a very simple play. I just I just walk in and then I just hold down my two button until everything is dead that's surrounding me. <laughs> While bone storms are being spawned that are just, you know, bring me alive. <laughs> I guess someone will probably get an epileptic when they're trying. I have no clue what to really expect from the blood seekers, if I'm honest with you right now, Chan. We do millions of damage, so every every like overpower we do is like millions. Yeah, this is this is blood surge essentially, and the thing is that blood surge incredibly profits from the glyph because overpower gets so much more overpowered when when you actually have the glyph going. So so that's that's a uh, the high recommend. And that's also why I wanted to try out Druid to see how Druid was going to be doing with the Pulverize. Right, but in order to play this the most efficient, I also have to have all three Bloodseekers pulled together. Right? And do damage to all three Bloodseekers together the whole time. And I truly don't know, like, at this, at this point how, how successful that's going to be. Again, tier 8 has fallen with a shrine. I'll say it, Chan. Doesn't make it less accomplished, but you just gotta, you know, gotta be like, tier 8 has fallen with a shrine. Mm -hmm. where you're it's already like you know we we get all these things going on we don't have the infinimus we gotta go around we can't probably just stand there and spam him down that's where pulverize seems to cap out at tier 15 i think pulverize has one cool thing going on that we have never talked about so let me let me get the druid so pulverize has one 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 very very cool thing by the way if you're wondering chat tier tier 15 is down we we've just we've just returned from our, uh, us beating a a, a tier fourteen. I mean, it's down not tier fifteen. Do you publish this build yet? The blood search build is published, and the um shadow build is also published. Both builds are out there and for you to enjoy, fully decked out, tacked out with every single little itty witty detail. Come on now, Chan, I got you covered. There's an upgrade here. <clears throat> Are all my vampire powers working? No, I have one of my vampire power not working. Oops. So this is just for our fellow druid enjoyers that have been asking, Pony, why about druid? There we go. Slow as fuck, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Let me meander just over. I'm ready. Uh, Vortis, thanks for being the third sub today. Thanks for spending your Prime Gaming support. Vortis, very good to see you there. Guten Tag. Okay, a tier one, guys. The cool thing about Druid is it really profits from this because Druid is getting the glyph here. Wait, let me show you. Druid is getting the glyph here, or at least my Druid will get the glyph in here. So this is total armor while in werebear form, and this is damage while in werebear form. And that's where we're going to just literally put the glyph. It seems like very good to me to essentially get the, the double thruple there. 
When we're not level 100, by the way, we're currently level 98. My HD Druid made it to tier 1. Did, did he also make it out of tier 1 or did he just make it to tier 1? You got no socket and no stone in the amulet? Yep. Shows you the amount of disrespect I have for this content. Wait, I'm currently playing this with, with freaking Godslayer Crown. Am I suicidal? I'm actually playing this with Godslayer Crown. Well, it didn't literally change a single thing, huh? problem is not having the 14k uh, 15k armor but this build does not have the 15k armor guys but despite like you know like we're we're currently at 10,000 armor right we're we're absolutely under cap for this kind of we're 20,000 life we should probably take an armor potion you know Right, only four vampire powers like metaphors of curse touch flowing veins and prayer of the week um, i mean prayer of the week is not working correctly or not not working correctly or then something is not working as intended so prayer of the week is kind of bugged right now in case you missed that one um also a curse touch is useless when you're playing metamorphosis no doesn't kind of like make sense to play both of them I don't think my resistances are even maxed out on this build. Yeah, my, my resistances aren't even maxed out. <laughs> Just in case you wonder, chat. So we, we, we're not at 15,000 armor and our resistances are not maxed out. But this is this is Druid so far. That is not level 100 yet. <laughs> keep, that, keep that in mind, right? So they're not level 100 Druid. Oh, now we're dead. <laughs> That's that's pulverized, right? Pulverized and not build out. Still working. Have you ever played the original Diablo? If so, how's Diablo 4 compared to it? But, but why would I compare the original Diablo to this? I mean, the original Diablo is old as fuck. Vortis and Altai. Thank you for the 40 months of Altai. How are we doing today? Pleasure to see you with us. Thank you very much. So have you thought about playing only four vampire powers? Like, Metal Rifles is a cursed touch. So, for the dot build, uh, right now, which one we're playing, actually, you know? Yes. Vampiric Puas, Vampiric Puas. So, we're playing Ravenous for the attack speed because we need that to cast faster to do more damage. Then you play Metamorphosis to actually make people Vampiric Cursed as they're standing still. You could technically replace this through Flowing Veins, but practically you want Meta because Meta also has a lucky hit chance. You have anticipation for the damage reduction and the bonus damage. Then you have flowing veins for bonus multiplicative shadow damage over time. And that is also affected by enemies moving or vampire curse. But since you continuously stun the enemies, you kind of want the vampire curse with metamorphosis. And then last but not least, domination to actually kill things a little bit faster and do 24% more damage multiplicative. Just don't see how you would choose to forego any of this. I mean, a curse touch again is not a bad thingy, but not for this build. I mean, having a chance to afflict Vampiric Curse on enemies, we have that already. So what will we go for there? You know? 
What would that do for us? Bugatur, hey Bugatur, we reached tier 15. We're there. We have arrived. Problem is we're at tier 15 and what, what level is our glyph? We we'll actually have to do a nine now. I need more time. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Where's my nines at? I have a nine flying around right now. Just need to do a nine to check on up like how much how much XP is missing there. Not sure what tier you're farming, chat. But nine seems the most reasonable. I can only craft seven more glyphs as well, chat. Then we're actually out. See, we've finally reached the pinnacle of what is possible. And once once you're there, you're there, and you're done for. Dum 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 dum. But it kind of feels bad to return now to like I, I don't know how it feels for you guys, but now after um after doing the abattoir zero, I have like no. I have not, like no sense for doing the normal Diablo anymore, you know, like like just just farming overworld, just just doing durials now. All of that feels kind of trivial in comparison to the Abattoir of Zir. At, at least for me, I don't I don't know how to say that. It's kind of like just 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 playing the game normally lost any any appeal to me. And since we're done for the abattoir, we're essentially just waiting then now for, um, we're just waiting for midwinter blind, right? Like it's kind of like this was supposed to be the end game pinnacle content and I kind of like beat the end game pinnacle content. So that, that was, that was essentially what my whole farm was there for. And, and like any farm I do in the overworld now, so any Lilith item I get, any, any Duriel item I get, any 925 item I get will actually not make me better for the abattoir. So I'm, I'm already, you know, at like, I'm sure I can always get like, you no know, shake That That's about it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, pfft. why, why even bother playing, playing like, you know, well, why, 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 why even bother like doing anything now? I mean, I will do the midwinter blight. So don't get me wrong, but winter blight is something I'm really like, like that, that would, that will give me a reason because I'm just going to get the skins and then, and then I'm done. But I, I don't expect the midwinter blight to be more than just a, like a three, four hour grind. I mean, as soon as it releases, we're actually going to grind it down guys. So we're going to see like the, the best, the best way to get midwinter blight done. Cause I, I, I'm not sure how time gated it is, but I mean, it's just for skins, right? When you just, you just go into Kyovichon, you just run around. It's going to be laggy as fuck. <laughs> It's gonna be laggy as fuck. We all know that. Yeah, here's these a test run to see what the community runs now. Um, the same goes for the leaderboards. I mean, the, the gauntlet, that is the to season three leaderboards. They're also gonna be like a gigantic test run to see what works with the community. When AOZ has shown this does not work with the community, the community is not looking for AOZ kind of content. <laughs> I mean, so something like AOZ, but definitely not AOZ. I think I think the verdict is already clear, right? It's by no means horrible, but it's also by no means what what people wanted. It seems. I mean, I'm not sure what I want. I just I just want to play Diablo and have fun. End of the day, right? I'm a simple man. I just want to play. Yeah. Oh, blast away for shrine. I have no armor going on right now. And that is very bad because if I don't have armor going on, then I might die to something very stupid and I don't want to do that. Thank you very much. So yeah, uh, we are right now here so I can do one and then I would have to do two more. Then we get our glyph up to level 13, Chan, and this might blow your mind right now. This will blow your underpanties into pieces. But if we're going for level 13, then we're actually going to get up to 101% damage. My problem currently is 
I think realistically to be tier 15, 13, 14, 15. I mean, from the damage I've seen that I'm lacking, I think I need to be at least tier 16. If not tier 17. And I don't want to be tier 16 or 17. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. We have how many AOZ streams did we do? Let's 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 recap this. How much joy has AOZ given us? Okay, this was stream number one. That's three hours and fifty, but only two hours and fifty was AOZ from that. Okay, so we got two hours and fifty. We got another five hours, so eight. Then we got another three three and a half, four hours, twelve. So in total today. 16 hours, 17 hours of AOZ fun. That's okay. It's okay. For for an event, for a time-gated event, that's absolutely optional, right? Seventeen hours. Kinda of, kinda of good. By the way, just just to give you a free feeling, uh, there there was a very interesting video from Mr. Rob. Uh for not not the tier 20 clear. The tier 20 clear wasn't interesting. He essentially just as he was still under leveled and didn't have his uh, like he just joined a tier 25. Uh, he had some Chinese players open that for him just to just to see from a damage standpoint, right? How much how much damage would he do in a tier 25, right? And this is essentially him standing like undying into this and doing like there was 100, 100 million damage there, you know, like so, so you see like these 200 million, 300 million, 400 million damage, right? You see all these damages going out, like all these amazing points of damage in a tier 25. Um, just to compare, like I, I do, I do like 20 million to 25 million damage, right? That, that's what I kind of deal. And now you have all of this going out. Like, so there's 300 million there, 500 million, you know, all this kind of damage. And you see that the HP of these guys hasn't moved a single bit. <laughs> so, so despite these, these damages here going out, right? The, like the, like more, more damage than I will ever deal with a Necker possibly humanly. Um, Yeah. I mean, see, like, that guy has lost one-third of his HP now. I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I don't know why people are playing, wasting this dead game. I mean, you seem to have found your time to go into a Diablo stream to whine about a dead game. So, I mean, the only one wasting time here, sir... Is you. Okay, didn't we have a midwinter blight video, guys? Didn't Diablo just Didn't Diablo just recently release their midwinter blight video? Ah here. Let's see. Hello everyone. Today we're gonna talk Hi. about an in-game limited time event called Midwinter Blight. It's winter themed with lots of goodies to unlock and secrets to uncover. It goes live December 12th and ends January 2nd, 2024. But first, some quick intros. We won't get any info about the Midwinter Blind before, like, before, off season three, before, after, like, after the 2nd of January. That's when we're going to get some info. Hello, Marcus. Hello, Derek. Once Midwinter Blight is active, head over to Kyobisha. Make it a bit lighter, louder for you, Chan. Midwinter Square. Go ahead and speak with the bard named Gillian. He's your event vendor, so you'll be seeing him a good amount. So, Marcus, what type of rewards can we expect to farm up? Well, players can actually get five different back pieces. One for each class that show off this most gruesome holiday. Okay, so back piece, guys. A back piece. I'm personally running a barb for Season of Blood, so I definitely want to get him one of these with the tusks hanging off the back. They all have skulls, so I'm ready to go. They're pretty wicked. Here are some of the insane weapon skins you can mm. Stuff, dagger, axe, bow, scimitar. Is that sword or is that like the thingy? You can acquire during the holiday. I, I want the shield. If I, if I could get the shield, I wouldn't complain about that. The shield looks plenty awesome. Like we mentioned earlier, players can earn up to 14 different cosmetics across all the classes, all totally free. Well, the demons will be paying for it in blood. Yep. 
Herculean's helpers are on their way. So you probably want to know how to farm these items well. We have three types of... I, I, I'm, I hate everything about this video so far because it's so scripted. They're using a prompter. You can see that. But, but it's, it's so scripted. Blighted fragments. Okay, exchange blighted fragments for midwinter proof. Exchange lost heirlooms for midwinter proof and exchange red cloaked trophy for midwinter proof. And use these to purchase midwinter rewards from Gillian at the midwinter square in Kjovichan. <sighs> lost heirlooms and red cloaked trophies. They all can be acquired from the purple zone on the map. Let's go ahead and cover all three types. You're going to find the majority of Blight Fiend fragments just from the Blight Fiend monsters on the map. Lost heirlooms drop from these gruesome looking frigid husks we have scattered throughout the zone. But to find the trophies, you'll need to decapitate the red cloaked horror. He's a big bad goat and has a chance to spawn when you complete the mastery for the Blighted Revelry event. It's hidden randomly in the zone, so keep an eye out. Also, when you slay the beast, you'll earn yourself a fancy new title for doing so. Once you've amassed enough midwinter materials, head back over to Midwinter Square, and next to Gillian, there's a crafting bench. Use this to convert all the materials you just farmed into midwinter proofs. This They'll never show us how much it costs. No, it costs 50. Okay, so you need 50 proofs to buy the respective thingy, right? 50 proofs are needed. And we needed wood, like here with four, with four trophies, you can make one proof. No, it's, it's one proof per trophy. Okay, so you're going to make me four. But it seemed like that, that that's going to be farm of hell. Just farmed into midwinter proofs. This will be the main currency for the event. By converting these materials into proofs, you'll raise your tribute tier with Midwinter, and it'll also change visually and give you more rewards, such as gold armor, gem fragments, and Gillian's Brew. Marcus, what in the heck is Gillian's Brew? Well, Gillian's Brew is a special elixir that increases your maximum life, your lucky hit chance, and experience gain by 15%. Increases maximum life, lucky hit chance, and experience gain. Wow. Can I, wait, can I use this for the Ever 12 Zier? John, G Gillian's proved the best elixir in the game. So hell tight, basically. I mean, Chan, midwinter blight is hell tight. Yes, like yes, yes. But you get fourteen cosmetics for free. It's a life service mid-season update that they didn't have to do, but they did it, and you get fourteen skins for free. Don't do it if you don't want to, but it at least gives you something to do. Right? Someone just recently complained it's not it's not uh it it's not life well. servicey enough. Yeah, there there's your life servicey. Also, you can farm a midwinter specific offensive aspect called the Shard of Dawn. This aspect increases your attack speed and movement speed for 12 seconds. And if you're empowered by the midwinter ward, every enemy you kill reduces the cooldown by one second, which makes it Wait, what was that? Shard of Dawn. This aspect increases your attack speed and movement speed. For so after 30 seconds of Knight's Grasp, gain Dawn's Haste, increasing your attack speed by movement while powered by the Midwinter Ward, killing an enemy. Huh. 12 seconds. And if you're empowered by the Midwinter Ward, every enemy you kill reduces the cooldown by one second, which makes it very handy for both. Dr. Business, thank you for the 67 centuries of support. Very good to see you there, brother. You save it for a new season. I mean, that's the good thing, right? You you keep you keep at least your skins forever, right? Okay, so this is something you can actually do forever. Time events, opposed to just adding to the existing systems that are in the game currently. Yeah, that's a great question. So, one of the best things about the limited time events like the Midwinter Blight are the opportunities that they provide us for experimentation. Uh, they're a fantastic platform for uh, testing out new concepts or playing with remixes of existing features and systems that players are already accustomed to but i have a feeling <laughs> i mean right now we're kind of like at the point where we have blood harvest we have hell hell tide and we have uh midwinter blind so is is this the extent of their creativity guys that we have zone based events our opportunity to package them up and present them in a novel manner let me turn off the in-game music, by the way, so we can hear hear Lat talk a bit better. Players to enjoy while yeah, but I, I, at least the cosmetics are forever. Uh, exactly. Case, some of the concepts that we explore and 
try out may also in turn inspire or empower future permanent systems and features that we might be exploring down the line. Yeah, who doesn't love a good experiment? Is there any way to show the red cloaked horror the true meaning of the holiday season? Can we make their heart grow three sizes? <laughs> I really wish that there was a redemption arc to all this, but unfortunately some goat men are beyond redemption. So the best way to show the red cloaked horror the error of his ways is to put him down as many times as you can while he's around. I mean, he Sometimes looks great. Don't get me wrong, right? Is just unfortunately the only way. It's like, it's like yeah, a miniature like boss that. fight in between. Well, now with the tears of blood, we're overpowered anyways. XP opposed so, so it's kind of like the midwinter blight will be more fun if you're level 90 and you're at least going to struggle a bit. Whereas right now, you're just going to go there with a tears of blood glyph and everything. It's going to be like, and just slay everything, right? Normal 5% that elixirs give. So my ults, thank you for that, number one. Um, do, do this brew only work in event zones or can you use it outside of that? Yeah, yeah, you know, Gillian brews the good stuff. So yeah, the best thing is that Gillian's brew works everywhere. And beyond that, all of the rewards that you can earn through him persist beyond the conclusion of the event. So you earn it once, it's yours. So Tears of Blood works out. Tears of Blood works everywhere, Xantrax. Tears of Blood is a glyph. It, it never said, um, it never sent he was the only you have you tried can. a tier 100 dungeon you're insane pretty sweet brew do so much more damage have you tried lilith so derek what's the most effective way to collect midwinter proofs do you have a pro strat for the players who've already been good but now we destroy lilith level. even gooder yeah, so ah. my specific strategy revolves around mapping out my routes so since the vast majority of local events are themed after the midwinter creatures it's never a waste to stop by one you'll always be making rapid accelerated progress by you know visiting one so I map out my routes and utilize my mount speed to get from point A, you know, point to point to point, and you know, stopping off, hopping off the horse when I spot the occasional, you know, fridge husk or two or big batches of blight fiends. Um, so I take a pretty casual approach to things. So I'm excited to see what types of uh, efficiencies players come up with. I like that they made this video guys. about Midwinter Blight, Super right? And this win. this would essentially be the video that every <laughs> creator makes to explain Midwinter I'm Blight sure. to the community, um, right? Yeah, so and Blizzard was like, no hold my beer. Level, but there are secrets yet to <laughs> hold be my beer creators. Uh, within the Midwinter we'll just do your Can job you for you. Why the Blight Fiends have started to construct the Frigid Husks? They just hate the holidays? Yeah, you know, uh, considering the fact that they we're getting the beta test i mean Zana, we have phenomenon. been the beta test since the very beginning and it will never it will never stop because end of the day the this is a life service game of sanctuary during this time right the only so you, you have you have to consider that since this is a life service game um they'll always just throw shit at us and see how well does it work because why why wouldn't they you know it's it's a simple method of iteration of learning of doing things um, of, of like just trying out stuff and having fun. Mr. Final, uh, Final Boss, congratulations. I'm happy that it worked for you. Uh, you know what? I'm like, I, I'll see how much grind this is. I'll, I'll definitely grind the skin for my Necro because end of the day, Necro is what I want, correct? I mean, we're getting, we're getting 16 skins, but we got to consider like how, how much it essentially costs to get these skins, right? We have, we have the vendor here. Uh, we, we know what we have to invest. I mean, like 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Mm. I'll get the midwinter skin for my... For my necro that I'm good. Also, by the way, what is this rogue chat? So this rogue has 17,000 attack power, 7,000 7, armor, and 10,000 life. On level 100. What is this? Where's, where's the other armor? What am I missing here? Perfection. Yeah, but you know, this is, this is here. This is, uh, this is Midwinter Blight. I'm not sure how excited you are for this. Loading more armor with disobedience small armor pop? Probably. That's true on Rogue. It's like your necro. I mean, I, I just, I just like to be beefy on necro. Let's be real. My at least ten thousand armor. My, my favorite necro when I have all the pieces together has been having thirteen thousand armor without anything. So thirteen thousand just base armor because why not? It was, it was always my favorite one. 
Uh, season uh, on Path of Exile, do you plan to play it? So my problem again with Path of Exile is a very simple one. In order to play Path of Exile, I will have to Google now. So, so like, you know, if I want to play Path of Exile, I will have to pull this out. I have to go Path, Path of Exile, Necro, Build, Necro, Minion, Build. Minion, Army, Necromancer, League Starter, Build Guide. Thank you very much. And then I'll I'll play I'll play this, but I won't understand it. So I'll look at what it does, right? I, I don't remember anything about the game. I've forgotten everything, literally. And then I'll have to then I'll have to build this, right? I'll have to get it done. And and like if I if I want to innovate this or if I want to turn this into a different direction, I would essentially have to start from the beginning. I mean the problem with Pass of Exile is as always that you Yeah. That, that you kind of like go through the skill tree, right? And you can't really reset it, right? I mean, resetting resetting things is quite quite, quite annoying. I do like Path of Exile. Don't get me wrong; it's a fun game. I I don't I don't doubt that the new season is amazing. To be honest, uh, but in, yeah. Don't see me playing it. I think it like we can do more interesting stuff, you know. I'm next to an ARPG gamer. I'm a souls. I'm a souls like gamer, and I like to play souls like games. So tomorrow, I mean the thing. So we we have it like raid. This is this was that. That was S tier necro. That was so. But what do we have? We have it today. We have it the we have it the tenth, right? And new season is on the that's December. A new season is on the 23rd of Jan. Right now we got Midwinter Blight. That's 12. So this is Midwinter Blight. And that's it. So Diablo-wise, we're not getting more. So what I'm planning right now to do is... Uh, games games planned to bridge, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do an Elden Ring... Elden Ring Platinum Speedrun. That's for sure. That's going to take everything. This is like, it's like probably two days. Then we might do another Lice of Peace speed run just because I can. Maybe. Uh, we might we might finish Dark Souls 3 once again. Dark Souls 3. Uh, there could be... Uh, we could, could actually try to get the Platinum for that just, just because I hate myself. Uh, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't finished Lords of the Fallen. Essentially, so that's also something I haven't finished, um, but I probably won't I, I didn't like Lords of the Fallen as much. It was a big disappointment So that's that right uh, last epoch is dead I mean like so so let's let's be real if we're now looking at what to do like you have to you have to just be realistic about things, right? So if you're thinking about doing last epoch, let's Google how well last epoch is doing last epoch so these are the latest last epoch videos. We're gonna sort by uh, upload date. Where's some? Uh, there's some random shit running on Twitch. All right, German's talking German. So uh, no views, no views, no views. 14 views, no views. 38 views. Um, 1,400 views. So these are like kind of the videos for last epoch right in, in the past day so no no one is actually interested in watching last epoch no one is interested in watching last epoch videos as well no no one is actually checking out any last epoch kind of stuff like no one no one actually <laughs> no, no one is making videos and no one is watching it correct so, so no one wants no one wants last epoch content at all When I try Lost Ark, I've already done everything in Lost Ark that is there to do uh, from release on. And then I was done with the game and I enjoyed it. And I, I have my couple of hundred hours in Lost Ark. It was really fun, but it's not my type of game to play every single day, if I'm honest with you. I mean, the smartest thing I could do, like realistically right now from just a... How do I put this now? From a... um. From a content strategy perspective, playing Pass of Exile might be the smartest thing to do. You know, from a business standpoint, simple. If I wanted to, if I wanted to do something like what's popping on Twitch right now, Path of Exile is having Twitch drops, if I'm not mistaken. 
so you can drop things right you could you could play paths of exile but that's kind of like i I'm, I'm just generally not interested at all <laughs> so that would be a smart business decision but not everything is a business decision because like you gotta make sure that your mental sanity stability and everything is not it's not at risk right so that that would be smart to do right now also we could do season of discovery but again i'm, I'm just really i don't like it i watched some streams on world of warcraft right so I, I watched some World of Warcraft streams and, and it was essentially the, the standard leveling that I've seen everywhere. I mean, maybe maybe with slight different classes, but but it's still World of Warcraft, right? And I'm still not a fan of tap target combat. I've never been a fan of tap target combat. Like, like please uh, ignore it as much as we can. Not have to deal with that. The day before, <laughs> the day before is dead. I mean, like, like, obviously, the, the top, I mean, the smartest thing would probably be playing PUBG chat right now. Because PUBG is doing really good with a Rondo update. You know? But this is literally just returning back to the roots. Because you have to consider now, what, what, do, what do I do? What do I do when I, when I play PUBG, right? Now, I'm not creating any evergreen content that you're going to watch in, in X to come, potentially. Whereas, whereas if we do another interesting Elden Ring speed run, I, I do just like making these. You know, they're always fun to watch. They're always brilliant. I just always like Elden Ring, right? We could, we could even go back to play Baldur's Gate. That would be probably better, you know, to finish our last Baldur's Gate playthrough. Because we're actually not done with that yet. Um, yeah. I mean, Lethal Company would also make sense because Lethal Company is kind of like this. Hearthstone has Hearthstone Battlegrounds going on. But as always, Hearthstone viewers are watching Hearthstone, and that's about it. <laughs> One of the few problems with Hearthstone, kind of. And this, this is like, you know, where, where streaming is just gaming games, right? But streaming ain't just gaming games. Streaming is like to, to properly set yourself up as a streamer. It's not, it's not just that. Try Maximus. Thank you for the 33 centuries of support. Maximus, very good to see you there. Welcome back, brother, man. Try record racing in Fortnite. Ooh. No dark mode. I'm disappointed. I have six monitors and not a single one has dark mode. Two bill. Infinimus versus Blood Surge. Who's the winner? Uh, well, Blood Surge is better for overall content and everything up to level 100. And then after level 100, the shadow build is doing better. You know? So I think we'll definitely begin with Elden Ring. I think this is going to be fun for all of us guys. Depending on how well this is also running on YouTube, we might do some little bit more. I mean, I, I've been, I, I'm not a, like, I'm not a super speed runner. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't do like these glitch speed runs. I essentially just want to, just want to get the platinum as fast as possible, because I think that's kind of fun to watch from my standpoint. And that's what we're going to be setting up. So that, that's definitely like a thumbs up. That's what I want to do. That's what we're going to have fun with. Uh, as much fun as you can have with that, you know, and make everyone smile. And if you like this, we might do some more challenges in that time to just bridge until Diablo 4 comes out. Because right now, I do really like Diablo 4 as my main game to play, kind of. And to not chain myself to um, other things. Right? And Showdown is fantastic. Well, we, we might do some more game showcases on YouTube depending on how I feel. But I, I like to sit on games where I create guides to, to be honest. You know how it is? When I when I, when I I play a game, I also like to make guides around the game. It's just how I am. So yeah. That was the solar panel situation. The solar panels are in my garage. <laughs> and the guys building them up are coming in a week. So already the... No, actually not in a week. They should be coming... 12, 10, 3 days. Replaying the game won't even lock in for you. We can try. I mean, let me see. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. It's not me. And depending on how things go, maybe maybe you'll see Path of Exile, guys. <laughs> maybe you'll see Path of Exile in a week. If I don't know what else to do. When we know Dia Diablo is, is definitely like, uh, d d you know, no more long-form videos for this season. We'll see. Biobo, thank you for the 69 centuries of sub or dubbers, Biobo. Fantastic. So I can lock in. So if you can't lock in, that's on you right now.
Yeah, it could be console version. We don't know. Good. I'd say we're, we're going to say goodbye for Diablo for today. And we'll be back in two days for more Diablo. But right now we're going to play some... <laughs> I think we're going to play some more Hearthstone Battlegrounds. I really enjoyed that. So we're going to say to YouTube already. We're going to keep Twitch running. But we're going to say already goodbye to YouTube. Um, so thank you for being here, YouTube. Uh, enjoyed having you there. Uh, we're going to do more on Twitch. And then uh, more content to follow, obviously, in the days to come. Because YouTube stream is always there with us.